Okay. Good. Thank you for the quick work. I was talking about you a little while ago, talking well about you. Um, that you posted <laughs> that you posted that um, tip from Jeff Mundkowski last week. That that little rig he made up. Uh-huh. And, and boy, I, I took a close look at that. That's some, he had some quality work in that. You know, it's a jig for your shop, but he put he put effort into it. He he is very proud of what he created. I I be I believe it's beautiful. It's on our website now. Look like great machine. Yeah, you know that's I, I'm Rambo here, but that's the beauty of what we do. We come up with so many nifty things that can share and help with people, and. We, we don't have a rating system. Um, I, 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 you know, about six weeks ago, I was told to quit answering my telephone. Um, we're, I'm going through some treatments right now, and uh, I get days when I really shouldn't answer a telephone, really. Um, but I get messages, and it, I get strange requests from folks about things. And it's just really weird. And, and the, the thing about not having advertisers or sponsors or whatever, um, we have folks that are dropping advertisements on our Facebook page. Don't be offended if you get eliminated. If it's a pure outright advertisement for product or whatever, it's going to get eliminated. We're just going to take it out um, because we're here to share information, not to be bought and paid for by sponsors or friends or whatever. So it, it, our chat is wide open for that. If you want to throw something there about something got coming up or whatever, put it on a chat. Um, I, I picked up one today that Cade Bolger has got one coming up. I think it's on planners. Wish I could see it, but he's got one coming up soon. It's it's on a Facebook page. And if Kay joins us tonight, we'll, we'll get him updated to our event calendar. I can see y'all, but can you hear me again? Oh, yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> I won't make fun of T-Mobile as much. <laughs> it's me. It's just my wife and I. We're both sitting in the, the the front room, and we have the TV up and watching Roku. And all of a sudden, we lose internet. You know, nothing's changed. No storms came through. The earth didn't shake. Anything else? You know, it's just one of those things. Eddie, how cold is it there? Uh forty-five right now. Oof. Okay. They tell me I it's we got through. three more we have three more days of this before it goes back into the seventies again. We got three wow. more of it. <laughs> My wife laughs at me when I tell her that when I first got out of the Air Force and was working as a carpenter, carpenter foreman. Um November, I dreaded November because it was the, the nasty fronts just popped pop then they go away for a day or two and you don't carry your jacket to work and about 10 o'clock it blows in and you know really really problem was you had to work harder to stay warmer hell that was no fun um i lost something just now get back to it we're 22 folks i'd like to hear what y'all been turning this week um you got something to show us, talk about, just jump in there and do it. I saw something on Joaquin's Facebook page. He's He is trying to catch up on Christmas trees. He does fantastic Christmas trees. He really does. And a snowman. But, um, and he's a character. He's a sweetheart. I just love looking at his stuff and all that. Good. Oh. He, he really is. I don't think a frown. I don't think his face has seen a frown ever. He's always had a great mood to him. All right, I I did a couple of things this week. 
What was that, Sue? I actually did a couple of bottle stoppers. Nice. I, I did uh, this one. Oh, cool. This is, this is the one that I, I didn't know what it was, and you guys told me it was oak. And you can see the the uh, the rays in it. But I, yeah. I put a blue, uh, it's like a gilding paste on it to see if it would go into some of the pores. And it did. You can see the blue cast yeah. in it. So That's that cool. One, and I put it on a little whiskey stopper. Nice. I mean, we all drink a whole bottle of wine, so forget that. And then I did a little Christmas tree. Cute. I like that. Very nice. <laughs> what do you think of the of the base of the tree? I think that's cute. That's really nice. No, that was a design opportunity. It got <laughs> stuck. <laughs> it got stuck on the mandrel. I couldn't get it off, and uh, so I wrapped the bottom with, you know, painter's tape, put pliers on it to try to loosen it, would not work. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get plier marks on it, put the plier marks all over it so it looked like a basket. <laughs> nice. But okay. Clever no, idea. Except you guys. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, well, actually, it looks like a, a metal tub that the yeah, tree is down in. I used I used the green gilding and the silver gilding on it. Nice. It is nice. So, Very so nice. That's, that's what I did this week. A design opportunity. I like the way that's yep. put. Very nice. I I had one get stuck on there, Sue, and I really liked the wood, and I didn't want to lose it. And I, it was ornament i couldn't get it off i put it in the freezer because somebody said well you do that you'll get a therm thermo shock when you take it back out <laughs> no the shock was when my wife called me and said are you okay you got bottle stoppers in the freezer <laughs> <laughs> i'm not okay it's all right if we have that <laughs> it's a cold over there eddie just nippy, Bill, 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 uh, Billy. It's it's just nippy. About 45, 46 oh, yeah. degrees. It's the same what are you thing talking here? about, Billy? You're in a sweatshirt too. I know it's it's damp and cold. My two favorite things. Yes. <laughs> hey, Billy, you're gonna be colder than I am tonight and tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah I just started not... the weather oh, check. Yeah. Say a minute ago. Yeah, it's uh... a. <laughs> mm -mm. Like I said, I used to work outside, and I couldn't stand it to be damp and cold. I could take the cold and the damp, but not together. No. Yeah, that's somebody. The somebody told me to make a, a, a like a scrub shirt hoodie out of Tyvek. It'll keep you from wicking off the moisture. Mm. It might be nice, but as soon as you take it off, you really, really, really need a shower. <laughs> We used to wear rain suits on top of our on top of our jackets and uh and just stay warmer so the wind wouldn't cut through you. Yeah, that's a good oh, idea. Yeah. I have I have a, a rain a rain jacket from one of those uh, high end outdoor outfitters. Um, used to be in a mall bias, they're gone. Um, but we bought it twenty years ago, and it is the most comfortable rain jacket i've ever had and it used to have a liner and i think one of my kids took the liner to wear and i never got it back but it's really nice and now i'm losing weight it fits nice really good <laughs> hey eddie let's see what uh ronald todd has uh made this week all right pop him up who's he at where's he at well let me find him i found talk him. to us found him there, there he is. Oh. Ronald, are you muted? Talk to us. There we go. You got me now? Yeah. Now we are. You're there. All Put right. it right in front of your yeah. face. Put it in front of your face. I just finished there you go. A, do a dozen of these. Nice. nice. That's that pretty. Is that real black? Yeah. What do you tell it? Is? No, no, that's uh, leather dye. That's actually uh, uh, apple. Apple wood with a cherry dye or with a leather dye. Very nice. 
You put a I sealer kinda, or something on it on the outside yeah, of the I, see, uh, I sealed it and then uh uh put lacquer on it and Nice. About but, on, the, uh, on the actual yeah, centerpiece. To, what, what's the yeah. centerpiece called? I can't think of what it's called right now. That's an urchin, urchin shell. Yeah. You put some kind of sealer on it too? No. No, I didn't oh, put okay. anything on it. Yeah. The uh, These are Christmas presents for the grandkids. So I kind of made them a little bit stout instead of taking the finials <laughs> down a little more. But yeah. I put Mod time. Podge. Mod Podge on the urchin itself. And it I got Mod it, Podge it on the inside. Oh, okay. Makes it a little yeah. more durable. Now, I finished these today. Uh, I hope they show up. Um, that right, right there. there. That's it. You see the... Oh. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. You see the iridescent? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got some purple in it. Yeah. That, well, it's it's actually, it's it's red. It's iridescent red, but it comes out purple. Yeah, and I did it. Uh, that's for my daughter, and then my my daughter-in-law. I got closer another closer to you. One. Closer to you. Oh, that one's got green in it. Yeah. Nice oh, job. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I'm going I'll be posting them on the website later on, but I can't do it now because it's before Christmas, and they monitor the website. <laughs> they monitor what I post. <laughs> So how did you get the, the iridescence to show through? Well, you have to, if you're using iridescent paint, and I use the Sojans, Josanya paints, okay. you have to have a nice or very smooth black palette right. to work on. Okay. As soon as you said Sojanya paints, I knew what it was. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you, you know, I'd like a, it's a black lacquer onto it then the paints go onto it and then a clear lacquer over top of it very um, nice yeah or you can use like a salad bowl finish on top that works pretty nice too okay mm. so that's what i've been working on that and prepare preparing for next week for the uh birdhouses right yeah well, I'll, yep. I'll give you. A, I I can't give you a preview, but it's, on these on these wine glasses, you have to you have to cut the stem. Well, I took the bottom part of the stem, the base of the stem, and I mounted the birdhouse on it. Oh, cool! Uh, so yeah. you can actually set it on a shelf or any anywhere you want to set it, and it's, it's got a nice base on it, nice. which I'll show next week. Nice job. Yeah. All right. Anybody I'm a little frugal that way. I understand that. <laughs> we all are. Yes. Where'd Eddie go again? I'm right here. Oh, we'll come back. Well, you got to take the spotlight off of Well, I don't see you, though. There he is. I see him. Lucky you. Oklahoma. There he is. Now he's back. I didn't even see you on the list. Okay, I should Salt be there twice. The Super the skew the or salt in the yeah. skew. Salt in the skew. Yeah, I seen that. Well, I didn't see. I seen your picture. I didn't see your uh, your name on the list, though. So anyway. Anybody else want to show anything right now? Yeah, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. Whatever they got. Come on. Don't know. I got something to show, but I want to wait till uh, Doug Miller's here. <laughs> I made uh, lid covers. Oh, cool. Oh, 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 I think I saw that. I think I saw that. Yeah, you seen that on this Facebook? Is, this is so cool. I'm going to really like it. Yeah. I was able to. It's nice with those. With those. You see, Doug gave you an idea and a technique. Yeah. And what'd you do with it? You ran. Yeah, I made five of them even. Cool. Wow. And one of them, is it one? yeah, just one of them with a secret compartment. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yep. That one turned out pretty good. Oh, Bill, Bill Goff got something. 
What are you coming in here? Uh, looks, like been, uh, looks like he's been at Billy Bird's you house or something. You asked yeah. you ask what I was doing. Maybe this is a birdhouse. For, uh, maybe it's a multi-family uh, birdhouse. <laughs> that is sweet. Oh, you ask what, you ask what hold I on, hold on. I got to get back. You, you asked what I was doing this week, and I wasn't turning, but I thought I would go ahead and show you what I what I did. I'm, oh I'm, I, I'm carving a, a gnome house. It's it's not quite done, but it's it's getting pretty close. So that's that what I've done. And maybe you can shut the door on me since I'm. Uh, this is not a turning project. But, you know. No, we would never do no, that. No, no. Oh my gosh, that is oh. absolutely gorgeous. How long have you been working on that? Oh, everybody asks, and I had I don't have an answer for you. Long time. Oh my god! Uh, I you know I get spurts. I, I might go down and work long days for three or four days, and I might not do it for a week or several weeks. But uh, right. uh, this was a project for our, our carving club. Uh, they wanted to how I carved the uh, gnome houses, so I made a presentation and used this. I had one side finished and the other side was a work in progress. And that's what I showed during the presentation I did for them. But anyway, I'm sorry that it's not wood turning, but it, it is. Anyway. Anyway. That's gorgeous. It's incredible. Yes. Is that one piece of wood? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's cottonwood bark. It's a bark of a cottonwood tree. And in order to get this size, I had to put like uh, three large pieces of bark together, glue it together, and then the car from that. Oh, beautiful. This board on the bottom is just a clamp that I use to put in the vise so I can work on it. But uh, anyway, yeah. sorry, sorry, it's not a wood turner. Please no, never no apologize apologies. for that. Never apologize. That is gorgeous. There's yes. actually there's actually a, a bed with a quilt on it. It's sitting in that room up there. You can't. Oh my goodness! <laughs> goodness. I see it. That's when, cool. it when, when it gets done, it's going to have all kinds of little things. There'll be smoke coming out of the the uh, uh, little stack here, and there, there's going to be smoke coming out of the top. And anyway, but it, it's a work in progress. <laughs> A little flower up on the balcony on the top. Yeah, too. there's a flower. There's going to be there's lamps. I, I got the candle lamps. That, there's little hooks here. A candle oh. lamp, real small, and it, oh, it will have goodness. it'll have different stuff on it. It'll have a broom in the corner here. It'll have a water barrel sitting here in the ground with a wood bucket beside it, and it's going to have a lot of stuff to it. Wow. Uh, please, please show us progress every every couple weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, this is a wood training group. <laughs> uh, no, no, hey, no, 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 no. Too late. You done showed us now. We got to see it as it goes now. Oh. I would like to see the, the comings of that one. No well, yeah. you know, I tell you, David I get... Winters, if you add a mouse to that on the outside of it someplace. A mouse, huh? Well, hey. Hey, here, I've got a mouse right here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, well, that guy, I'll, I'll get off of the board turning. That's incredible. Yeah, that is fantastic. Good job. Good job. Thank you. He's apologizing because there's not wood turning. Never, never apologize. We want to see all your art. Really. Yeah. We're worldwide yeah. wood turners, but. If our members do things like that, or pretty much anything, remember we have the no but guarantee. No but. And even that can give somebody an idea for another birdhouse. <laughs> right, yeah. right. We're open for ideas from anybody, anywhere. <laughs> Bob would Bob would have a fit if he saw that sentence in a birdhouse competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put, put a stack on the roof. Let's <laughs> see if we can find Roger Woolham. Roger, Roger, Roger. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, there you are. There he is. I saw him a minute ago. I'll get back to yeah, him. I'm here. I'm I here. You here I am. What you got? My Ooh. birdhouse. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, my. Raise it up a little bit. Okay, there you go. That is cool. Now, that he gave us his secret really to cool. that a couple of weeks ago when he, he first showed those pieces to us. Yep. 
He gave us the secret. Now, Roger, I saw a promo for this club on Facebook and YouTube today, and they have three pieces, three photographs of something just like that. You need to look at it. Okay. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> They're yours. We we feature all the items that come into us and, and all the good photographs. They all go on our promos. If I got to produce 10 a week, I'll produce 10 a week. But we want to show people what what terms cool. can do. That is beautiful. I thought I'd done enough of the vases, and I had that piece already glued up. So I thought, well, why not make a birdhouse out of it? Heck yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's beautiful. Hey, yeah. be sure you come back for that next week now. I will. All right. <laughs> Okay. We don't. We're not out to break Bob's heart. We just wanted to fracture it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's see if we can find Randall Smith. Yep, I'm He's here. Yeah. And uh, let's see if I can share my screen. Randy's got a short one-minute pen tip. Yeah, when you're making one or two pens, it's okay to uh, scuff the tubes. Uh, some tubes come pre-scuffed, pre and it's important to scuff the tubes. Definitely. Otherwise, the pens tend to fly apart. But when I'm making this many pens, I use a disc sanding on my lathe, and I scuff them on uh, a piece of wood. So let's see if this starts. Nope. I'm going to have to stop and start again. You're going to have to stop a lot of pen tubes all at once inside there. We're hearing it, but we're not seeing it, Randy. Yeah. Did you say? I know how this feels. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, well, look at you. Huh. Oh, you got a little dowel rod? Oh, maybe two minutes. Enjoy. Well, that's cool. That's so basically that's, how I'm that's basically how I make snowman noses. So that's just how I can make like 40 uh, scuffed tubes in about oh, two or three minutes. Right, a lot easier than taking them or putting them on and off of the uh, mandrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's just a tube. That's just a piece of wooden dowel that I put them on so that it, so that the the tube would fit on it. Sweet, uh, but but uh, slim lines are often not scuffed, but uh, some of most other pens, uh, larger tubes are scuffed. They come right. Right. But well, thanks, it. Randy. Thanks, Randall. That's a great idea. Matt Horror, you're out there. Can you say a word or two, Matt? Yeah, what are you looking for, Eddie? Uh, I'm looking for you and I couldn't find you on the roster. <laughs> and that, that's um because I click you in as co-host, just like Billy and some of the others, you know, because right. you know help with duties and yes. It takes a lot of us to do this. <laughs> Doug Miller's in the building. <gasps> Doug is here. Where's he at? Where's he at? Howdy. <laughs> See? Yeah, he He's just here. he just got here. Hi, Doug. Your cat's Hi, watching. Doug. What's yeah, that? Sue's, Sue's cat's watching. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, mine usually is. How's everybody tonight? We're doing good, sir. And you? Good. I, I look warmer than Eddie does, which I'm not. I'm a little confused about. <laughs> you too. I can't believe you everybody's too. in sweatshirts tonight. He's lost I all that weight and he's cold. That's what it is. All right, yeah. all right. I got two inches of snow outside, so. Oh my. Well, you got me beat, but. I, I I I take so many blood thinners through this treatment that 
Billy Bledsoe running out of oak pores right now, and that's got me very, very cold. <clears throat> my wife, yeah. my wife ordered me uh, half a dozen sweatshirts through Amazon yesterday, and that's a minute ago. I had to get up and go to the door and and let let her, the guy deliver it, but. Um, she's out to keep me warm. <laughs> She'd be mad right now. This is a regular t-shirt under this thing. She wants me to have a sweatshirt on first, no matter what happens. Oh, goodness. <laughs> good plan. Good plan. Yeah. You're warm. You're healthy. That's good. Yeah. Yep. And and now she's, the kicker, I have to go to, or I do go to aqua size at least five days a week. Very often we go all seven days. Uh, she wants me to wear long johns over there to get. I, I really, you know, <laughs> before long she wanted me to have wear them in the pool or something. I, you know, there be, <laughs> should be rules about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that Doug is here, let me show you. Oh yeah, dig it out, Brenda. Dig, dig it out. out. Check this out. Check this out. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Check it Stand out. Stand by, Doug. Check it out. <laughs> and yeah, I did not put the ring in, but it's stuck in there. Yeah. Check, can you see that? Can yeah. See that? <laughs> How are you going to get that? that? How are you going to get the seal to stay in there when you stick something up in there? What's well, going to stay on the jar? Yeah, but aren't you going to put something up in the lid? Yeah, and it'll it'll come out when you keep dropping. Pop it on every, the floor. Every time, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I thought okay. I Remember, we have a no we have a no bud guarantee here. Be careful. Well, it just gotta depends hide. on what you put in the jar and what you put you gotta, in. Gotta, <laughs> gotta hide the M M's hidden in the top. That way, when the jar is empty, you've always got three left, you know? Yeah, yeah. You just set it upside down. <laughs> and, the, and the kids will wonder how to get them out. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful, Brenda. Depending on what you put in it, that could be a problem. Yeah. But that's one of them I've made. Here's another one I made. That's great. Yeah. And this one is for a small mouth. And I didn't glue none of them in there. So... That'll work. There's that one. Oh, it's got a big old crack in it, too. See the big crack? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And here's another one. Super. You've been busy. I made five of them. Check this out. This so one. So the yours can actually be put on real jars that have stuff canned in them already. Because yeah. you, can you can unscrew the ring without opening the flat. And you don't open the seal, right? Yes. So that makes that makes it nice. I haven't decided what to do with that hole yet, though. Do like I did on that one last week. I used uh, CA and coffee grounds. Yep. I had a gap just like that that I filled with CA and coffee grounds, and you would think it's just a bark inclusion now. Okay, it's awful. I mean, you know, it goes it's awful deep. Yeah. Right? I had the, that solid lid, so that made it easy for me. I had a backer, but yeah. you, could put, you could put some tape on, on the inside there and then fill it from the outside, and you'd be golden. Yeah. I thought about maybe putting a ring back in it. Oh, this ring, the ring is just a yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't quite it don't cover the hole. Yep. But anyway, I don't want to put that one yet, but. So do you do you use your coffee grinds before you use them for that? I you, don't. I use fresh ones. Fresh ones, okay. You can fresh use ones old don't ones. Don't work as good. What's that? I haven't had very good luck with fresh coffee grinds. They yeah, I've never used anything but. Hmm. But now, if you do, if you use old ones, they got to be dry. They yep, gotta dry, you got to dehydrate them. Yes. If you can get espresso. If you can get espresso coffee, that works even better because it's super fine. Yes, that's what I use. Mm -hmm. oh, I've never tried espresso. I'll have to give that a shot. Wait, probably I wanna, hit up a hit up a coffee house. They got plenty. Well, I ain't gonna have a ring in it. Then. Anyway, this one this is kind of wild, isn't it? 
Almost looks like dipping. you're making an orange juicer. Yeah. yeah, and it's got this little dip inside with this little tip in there. Now check out the inside. You know, Brenda, you could put an LED in your little secret compartment. So it lights up. I'm watching it there on your TV screen, and the inside of it is lighting up from your, your computer screen. Yeah. It would be it'd be cool if you actually had an LED in your secret compartment so that, you know, batteries and whatnot, little yeah. sections. So you kind of glue it in there or something. Yeah, and it'd light up your whole jar. Right, right. This is a good idea. A lid on just the uh the ring because of the tip inside here, it sticks down inside. See how it's yep. Yeah. Orange candy, but orange flavored candy in there. But I thought that was good. <laughs> you know, it was just weird. Fresh, fresh squeezed. I haven't finished most of them. I'm not sure. But this one I'm Cute, thinking like it needs some color or something. That's actually a really nice idea. That's a really nice idea, Brenda. Yeah, my mind just kind of went and went and went and went. There you go. That's yeah. what it's supposed to do. When yeah. you start, when you start spinning, it affects your mind. Yeah. <laughs> this one I'm thinking it needs some color, though. Maybe some different colors. You know, a, diff a color here, a color here, and something different here or something. Faces. There's a couple of faces. In there. Yeah, I don't know. Dot painting. What's Even. that? Dot painting. Dot painting? Yeah. Could even stain it. Just a, a nice uh, dark stain of some kind. Be nice. Dark stain? What about red? Um, <laughs> maybe this one. Maybe burn mm -hmm. it. There you go. Or this one. What kind of wood did you use? Um, I think it was all oak. Okay. Oak scorch is really nice too. If you've got like a hobby torch or just a propane torch or whatever, I got it scorches. Yellow. Yeah. Yeah. This course is cedar. This these four of them, I think, were all out of the same piece. These four. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. Big whiskey smoker out of it. <laughs> UFO. That's what I thought. The one with a hole in it, you could also fill it with brass shaving. Yeah. Brass. Oh, yeah. At a hardware store. Uh, they'll get, they'll get the, the key cutters will give you all the brass you want. Mm -hmm. Now, but you got to be careful. There's not metal in that. The magnet, he's a magnet. Doesn't get it all. It'll That'd get the seal. with that color, too. Huh. But remember, it's got to be an old fashioned hardware store because the gizmos at Home Depot and Lowe's and all, they don't give me, you know. And that's. Locksmith. Well, well, all right. Wait, 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 wait. I got to show this to you. Here it comes right there. That's that's there gold, go. Brenda. Just scorch with there it. There you go. It. Yeah. Just, man, just hit what, the green with it. Yeah. What do you put in the middle? But that's a little uh uh whiskey smoker. Whiskey smoker. Yep. It's green. I can't get it out. <laughs> so it's like a little yeah. miniature strainer? Yeah, it's a little screen thingy. All right. And where do you get those? On Amazon. Okay. You get 30 of them for like seven bucks or something like that. Oh, that's cheap. Another thing I wanted to since you're, you're a captive audience, <laughs> is what do you use inside your chalice so people can use them? I mine? use, I, I have tried a bunch of different things and I am currently using Minwax Spar Urethane. Um, okay. I've tried epoxies, I've tried wipe on poly. Poly works decently, epoxies work decently, but you can't put uh, heated liquids and th something you, you put an epoxy in usually because it, it softens it. Um, I haven't tried like, a, you know, a, a, a epoxy like JB Weld that's supposed to be good for high heat. Um, but that might work. But epoxy is a lot of work. That Minwax spray urethane, uh, uh, Helmsman spar urethane works really well. So thanks. Takes a little well, longer to cure. But it's it's yeah, I, I go through my whole process because I'm putting multiple coats on. So I put like two, three coats and then sand it back, you know, make sure I've got it saturated in the wood real good uh -huh. and then sand it back and then 
you know, keep adding coats until I've got the surface I want. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. I got another uh, question or whatever. Can somebody tell me where would uh, where would I find some uh, of the uh, Bert or uh, wind chime tubes? I cannot find big ones on Amazon other than comes with the whole kit, you know? Do you have a, do you have a scrap yard near you? Uh, I have no idea. Like someone that sells scrap metal? I found, I made a wind chime about three years ago and I found some aluminum tubes that are about an inch and a half in diameter. And I have a wind chime that I made and the tubes are probably four feet long. So Ooh. it's very cheap, but you have to, if you search your scrap yards, some of them, if they're good enough, will separate the metals and different geometries. And, you know, mm -hmm. they'll sell them at really cheap, almost scrap prices. But if you tried to buy some of those tubes commercially, you would pay through the nose for them. Yeah, they're like $18 for a, a, or a wind chime kit. Right. Need the tubes. I was thinking about maybe even uh, anybody had any old um, the aluminum um, flag kits, you know, flag poles. A, I'll look for a website. There's so there's a, a gentleman that made a an entire website on tuning wind chimes out of all different materials and metals and thicknesses. Yeah. And you can actually go in and figure out how long and what material you want to uh, make them out of. And it will give you the geometry to drill the holes and how long to make them and where to strike them. There's a whole whole study really? on what sounds the best and where to strike them, where to hang them. Um, that's oh. what I used. I've got a five chime um, uh, wind chime outside, and it it's beautiful. It sounds great. I'll look for the can, okay. can you put that in the chat? Yeah. I'll try to find it, and I will. Yeah, it's been a few years since I used it, but I can find it. Good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Jeff, we were bragging on you a little bit earlier about your uh, device okay. you showed last week, and that is on our on our uh, on our website now as a tip. Awesome. I used it this off. week uh, making my little canister that I've been working on, and it worked great. So great. good. Good. New ideas coming from good returners. Isn't that great? That's, I think that's what we started. Oh, uh, Dave Rhodes, I mailed this to you. It's from one of our members, and it's a program that you'd like to see if you could put it onto our website. Um, it came back today. Get this. I mailed it at the post office on their machine the way it said, and I got it back for inadequate postage. <laughs> so we're going to try it again. Well, we can and try just uh, transferring the file maybe between uh, us. I'll contact you later and see if we can figure that out. All right, good. We can do that. <laughs> Always like information from our members. We like to share them with everybody. Nothing's proprietary, at least not here. It's not. Let's, um, let's go to um, Tom Kenny. Tom, whoa, like what? Yeah, what you got? Hey, I have two holoforms to show tonight. The first one, I have no idea what kind of wood it is, but it was a crotch piece. Let me switch over to that camera. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, nice. That is pretty. Yeah. I got the, the flame, nice. the crotch part to go right across the center of it. I was real pleased with the way that came out. Nice. Beautiful. Man, oh man! And I, what kind of I have no idea. It was uh, found on ground. Uh, I'd call it cedar. <laughs> it's it's denser than that. It's it's pretty heavy, uh, pretty dense. But uh, mm -hmm. it was a crotch piece, and that, as I say, I, I got lucky and got the flame to go right down the center of it. Came out pretty nice. Real pretty. And yeah, the second piece. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, very nice. Spalted. 
that is some uh, spalted sycamore and camera focus, please. <laughs> nope, not listening. <laughs> <laughs> no. Still no. no. <laughs> it's still pretty. Well, use your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> I see a bird and a pig and a... <laughs> oh, man. Any more There's the bird right there. There we go. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Right. Oh, look at the Hold fish. The Hold still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see oh, the fish. Yeah. And then my better half has a piece that I'm going to show and she's going to talk about. We took a class with Sally Alt up at Aramont, and this was her oh, piece. Oh, my goodness. This was the, the first time that I, I was doing boxes. And uh, we took a class at Aramont, and uh, the bottom is a, a type of mahogany, and then maple is on the top. And, and that's just a piece of an earring that I found and, you know, keep for finials and other things that I might want to use it for. But wow. uh, it was a fun class, and it taught me a whole lot. And um, here it is. Now I'm going to start showing. What kind of finish? I'm sorry? What kind of finish is on it? Uh, you know, I don't remember. <laughs> Probably, maybe Odie's. I like it. It's, it's a satin. I like that. Yeah. Right. It's, and it's hollow, you know, and it's it's got the... The uh, maple <laughs> part of the top, so nice, oh, nice. Did a little finishing work. Very nice. Thank you, thank you so much. And you took that class at Aramont? I did. Yes. Uh, I took that class, and I've also taken a, a class with uh, Jim on and made a kaleidoscope that I'm going to show when he shows his. Okay. Cool. If I can get it to, you know, so we can get it to show the stuff inside. It's really cool. Really nice. I've, but I I've mean, been Air, go ahead. I've been there a couple of times, some of the most enjoyable times of my life. Um, and uh, the last time I was there, Ellie Avasaro was there. Oh, yeah. He was, he was still, he was burdened with a, a little bit of a language problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's such a nice guy. I just, he was supposed to have a guy there to help him. That guy went off and got busy with politics <laughs> of the, of the group. And I stepped in and I had the most enjoyable time with that man and learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And and if you're watching one time, you'll understand he can master the skew, just master it. Um, and I say that knowing Cade Bozier out there, but you know, I really fell in love with how Ellie did the, the work. And it, it, it really, really changed the way I worked. Really did. So I like Aramont. I do Folks, too. Folks, if you haven't, haven't heard about them and checked them out, you need to check them out. I felt like this was the first time that I stepped over the threshold and felt comfortable with the tools. And comfortable enough to come home, come home and set up the lathe and put the wood on and start turning. So that was a great step for me. That's the way to go. <laughs> it was. All right, let's go to Chris Nealon. I got to get me out well, here. I have something, but I don't know how to share a photo on my iPad. So if if you can. Excuse me for a minute. I'm taking you into the lavatory. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's so, not good. <laughs> all you got to do is, so that here is just a candle holder. That's for a night. Out of a cherry crotch. That's pretty. Nice. Full, full disclosure, it was not supposed to be. My wife saw that and said, that's what I need for the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> yes, it does. Nice. So now I got to make about 10 more. <laughs> Very nice. And I yes. thought we were completely safe when Doug Rose not here, but I guess uh, <laughs> we're going to step right in. 
Doug <laughs> Ross in the house, guys. It was clean. <laughs> yes, good job. <laughs> All right, let's go to Charlie Bundy. Yes, ma'am. Where are we at? Where are you I'm at? right here. Charlie, I can't find you. He's oh, lost. that's hard to believe. <laughs> there he is. Never been lost. <laughs> what you got? Uh, last week, I was showing some of the kitchen vases I made. I got two more made. Oh, my. Ooh. And Brilliant. that is where it dried split. That is cut. That's brass. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. There you go, Brenda. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. I want to see that spalt. All them side. splits are filled with brass. With brass. And where did you get your brass? I have a friend that's a, a locksmith. Okay. And all he does is brass keys. He don't do metal. Okay. Oh, I love Other metal. that. <gasps> and there, there's the inside. Nice. Captain, I hate to say this, but Brenda, do you see the wolf in there? Oh, man. Let's right. see. Yeah. Right over here yes. in the corner. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. Uh -huh. See his teeth. <laughs> see, Eddie, everybody sees Here's... it. Back it up. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's Those pretty. cracks are also filled with brass. Oh my goodness, you got an awful lot of brass, don't you? Yep. Well, this is Elm, and you can ask Matt Herbert. Elm is very hard to come by. Nice. And this has been dead for probably 30 years, and it dried and crashed. Hmm. Oh, a lot of nice folding inside, too. Cracking or something. Very nice. It's coated with tongue oil. Very nice. That's all I got. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Great seeing you, sir. Nice stuff, Charlie. Thank you. You're back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think Matt Harbor said he's got a few pieces of show, yeah, and then we're going to jump. Then we're going to let's 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 work this out. We're going to look at Matt Harbor's pieces, and then Safety Sue's going to join us. And then Bird House Bob is going to start yeah. his demonstration tonight. So let's work out with Matt Harbor. I'll go quick. Uh, I'm trying to get things done in the shop because uh, it's getting cold and I want to be inside painting rather than uh, than outside in the cold. So uh, you got me, Eddie? Okay. So I just, one of the things I've been doing is finishing, a, finishing plates. Whatever you're turning. So. Wow. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Matt. Let's. Can we? Uh... Whoever it was got muted. I think. I think you're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead then. Yeah. So I like having an OG on the bottom here, like this. So, uh, you know, Sandy Sealer, and then there's another one. Little plate. Uh, very thin piece of wood, as you can see. It started out, and then one out of walnut. Oh, that's pretty. That is pretty. Yeah. Really nice, so, man. Oh, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I'm just, you know, finishing up little scraps and stuff I've got in the shop. So making little things what? out of them so I can paint What them, was that so. word you used? What was Crap. that word you used? Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> ah. Extra wood. Extra wood. How's that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> little leftovers. <laughs> yeah, I've, been, wood. <laughs> I've been making, I've been making snowmen and stuff too, but I don't have any to show. So next week. Great. All right. Thank you, Matt. Yep. And uh, Safety Sue is on deck. Where's she at? Where's she at? I'm right there. I'm up on top. There, there she is. All right. Sue, what you got? Everyone? I want to welcome back Martin. I saw that he's in. And Professor Rowe. We've missed Professor Rowe's in the house. Hey, what's happening, everyone? See, Professor found out about that bathroom thing. That's why you had to come in. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I wondered if a lot of people look at our safety moment on our website. 
It's got some great ideas under different topics. And so I've decided that I'm going to start going over some of them every week so that if you guys don't read them, at least you'll hear about them. And today we're going to talk about faceplate safety. Face plates are great as long as you use them safely. Whatever you do, never use drywall screws. They'll snap off and the thing will go spinning in the air. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Do not use drywall screws. Make sure any screws that you do use are firmly in the face plate. You don't want anything loose. Make sure it's firmly on there. Make sure the wood is flat against the face plate. If it's not, true your wood up. Make sure it's flat against the face plate. Ensure the back of the face plate is firmly positioned against the headstock with no threads exposed. Okay, and by by that, if if you still if you've got your seven or eight threads on there and it doesn't go all the way up, use a washer. Use the washer that prevents anything from locking in. And that's the next one. It says, use a washer to space between the back of the face plate and the headstock. Gina's dad. Assure the face plate is at least one third of the, dynamo of the diameter of the blank. That's a big one, folks. Don't use a little tiny face plate with a 13 inch platter, <laughs> okay? You want to use if if you're doing a nine inch, you want a three inch, you want a three inch face plate. So make sure you're using the, the proper face plate for the items that you're going to be turning. And when mounting a face plate, make sure seven or eight threads are in the wood, and that's for your screws. <laughs> Don't use those short little things. You want to have beefy screws that will at least hold your wood steady and safe when you're turning. So on that note, be safe this week. I'd love to see you next week. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. Thank you all so much for saying don't use drywall screws. Mm -hmm. it, unless you hang a drywall, stay away from drywall screws. All right, we're going to go to a gallery. I mean, to, to a demonstration tonight. And uh, this is a little something I want you to, to see because this we talk about each week. Demonstrations are by, uh, by our members and you're welcome to do so. Demonstrations are not paid for their work. Commercial promotions are definitely not permitted. Product endorsements are discouraged, but uh, it, I have to say if I'm using such and such, but you know, it's okay. Uh, we're gonna let the demonstrator complete his work. Please let him complete his work. We'll have a Q and A session following the demo, and if you if you like what he does, say it. Send him a chat. Whatever. Sign up. We're waiting for you to be part of this. This is your wood turning club, and that's why we're in with Birdhouse Bob is with us right now. Good evening, sir. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hi, Bob. I don't understand. Oh, so fire, so good. I don't understand what Captain Eddie said. He told me I, I get a year's free oh. membership for doing this demo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. For you, Bob. <laughs> We're going to do a birdhouse like this. There we go. There you go. If I'm going to use a different type of wood, but it'd be the same Cute. shape. And, uh, We're going to use a piece of cherry for the roof, and we we'll use a piece of ambrosia maple for the body, and then we'll use a piece of uh, cherry for the perch and for the uh, finial. I like to normally do the perch and finial out of the same type of wood as the uh, roof is, just so that they don't, you know, it doesn't match the body part. So I'll start off by I've got a piece of wood that's it's a little over two inches and it's four inches long and this is going to be a roof. So we'll start off by rounding it off and I'm using a spindle roughing gouge to do that with. Mm. 
So we just come across with the thin little roughing gouge. And when I use this, I don't start out here outside. I start in the wood and go towards one end or the other. I want to get pretty straight, pretty strong across, and I can lay my tool on top of it. And if it, my tool starts bouncing, I know it's not round. It's pretty close to round. You can hear that. Can you hear that noise? That's not round there. It's thumping. If you look at the piece of wood, see right here, I've got a flat in it. And I've got to get that out. And one of the things as a safety thing I do is I take my rings off because I could get up here and get my ring caught between the tool rest and the uh, piece of wood. And that would not be pretty. That should be pretty well round. That's close enough. Now, another thing that I do is I turn my switch on and I turn it, change the speed with my speed control. So I, when I'm stopping, I just turn my speed control all the way back. That way, if my piece of wood is not securely mounted or if it's out of balance or something, it's not starting off real fast. Okay, had to move a light. That's my favorite light too. You can adjust it. And we had to move eyes. it. I could shine it in Lynn's eyes. Okay, so <laughs> what we're gonna do now is we're gonna measure this and find the center of it. Okay, this is three and seven eighths. So it's gonna be two and one plined in. That's gonna be the center of our piece. And I like to take a, any kind of tape measure and put a magnet on the back of it. And I can just stick it on my lathe and it's there when I need it. So we're gonna find the center of this piece of wood. All right, now we wanna make a line lengthwise. And let's line this up here. All right, now I want to go 180 degrees from that. And what I did, I just used my tool rest to hold my pencil and just went across. And then I went lengthwise into the wood or across the end. Now, if, if it's not exactly perfect, the bird doesn't care because they're getting a free place to stay. Okay, so now what we've got is this is the center point this way and this way. And the same thing here, it's 180 degrees across. So we'll make a little punch there. Okay, I did that off camera and I just put a little punch here where these two lines intersect and where these two lines intersect. So they should be about 180 degrees from each other. 
And then I'm going to mount it, and then that's when it gets exciting. So I'm going to mount it between centers this way. Yeah. There we go. Are there any questions about what we've done so far? Are there any questions? No. Okay. So we're gonna bring our tool rest over here. And I wanna make sure this clears. So we're clearing good. And um, about finger width below center on my tool rest. And I want to be cutting about center. Now I'm going to use a bowl gouge to do this with. Uh, you could use a spindle gouge if you wanted to, but I just, I prefer a bowl gouge. And I'm going to cut it at this angle right here. So I've got to come all the way down to here. And that, if I come all the way down, then that'll give me my oval shape. And I'll leave a tenon right here so I can mount it in a chuck to do the inside. I do, I do this pretty fast because you're cutting a lot of air. I'm doing about 2,000 RPM, and I'm just doing a real light cut. As you can see, it's starting to take shape. I'm doing a full cut. The reason I'm going fast is because I'm only cutting here and here. So if I was going real slow, my gouge would have a tendency to go in between revolutions. Now I'm gonna make me a pattern here. And I'm cutting right here on my tool, right where my finger is. And it's making the same full cut over and over again. And when I'm cutting, I bring my handle around like this. And that gives me a curve. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's going to be our tenon that we're going to hold it in the chuck with. Okay, I'm going to stop and move my tool rest in. It gets pretty far out pretty quick. And see, I've gotten to this point. Now I want to go down to this point right here. And give it a spin. Use the cutting end on my on my gouge. Now I'm doing a real light cut here. All right, now I'm getting near the bottom. If I kept on using a full cut here, I could get some some uh, breakout at the end. So I'm gonna turn my tool around, and right now I'm not cutting. Can you see, does that show up? Does that show up on screen? Okay, this is about a trick I learned from Jim Duxbury. I bring it around and that helps me find that edge for the bottom. And then just come in just a little bit. And if you've ever turned a natural edge bowl, you're basically doing the same thing here. Let's see where we're at. And keep your hands behind the tool rest. That little edge is sharp. We've got a little ways to go. Change my tool rest. Give it a spin. Come back and find out where my edge is. Right. And I'm moving, I've got a triangle here where, where I'm holding my tool. Right here, right here, and I'm curving it right here. And I'm moving my body. That triangle doesn't change. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, we're almost there. See right there. Now we were a little off on our on our circle. You can see, you see, this one's already come to the end and it's an oval. But when we finish, it's going to be the same. So we're good. Give it a spin again. And sand that out. I'm just taking my time on this cut because I want it pretty smooth. The smoother it is, the less sanding I have to do. And I'm moving my body and my hips when I'm moving my tool. Okay, so we've got both edges in an oval here. You see that? Yeah. Well, we got a little bit of touch there. We got it now. And if I move my tool slow and easy, I'm gonna get a real smooth cut, which means I'm gonna do a lot less sanding. Now, for those of you who like to sand, you can move it faster. I don't really care to sand.
So I'll take my parting tool and just make sure I've got a good square edge here. And one thing you got to remember when you're chucking this up, normally you're chucking long grain this way. With this, you're chucking side grain, so you can't take a real aggressive cut. Okay, so we got us a good, good corner there. Take it out and put it in the chuck now. That's your knockout bar. Now, I use these spigot jaws, but you don't have, you know, if you don't have them, that's not an excuse not to do this. Because what you can do is make you a jam chuck and use regular jaws. I'm putting it in my chuck and I'm going to run my tail stock up into it just to make sure that I'm centered in it. And that just gives me a good pressure into my chuck and tighten it down. And I, I tighten both sides. Just usually get a little extra tightening that way. Okay, so now, now we're going to do the inside. And the first thing we're going to do when the in, on the inside is drill a one-inch hole. Second thing is to take this thing, take the live center out so we don't poke our elbow. Bob, who's doing your AV work tonight? Who's your assistant? The incomparable Land Brady. <laughs> Great job, Land. Thank you, Mike. I want it drill bit. It's sitting up here. There it is. So we want to drill the hole one inch. And I want it to go past this point right here. That's the top of this curve. I want it to go past that. And I'm going to run about 400 RPMs. And I always hold my chuck so it doesn't get away from me. Now, if we don't get it quite deep enough, we can always drill it deeper, a little deeper later. That's not a problem. Okay, so we're down right about there. We're just past that, so that's good. All right, now we're gonna hollow out the inside. So I'll put my tool rest 90 degree or parallel to the, this front edge. And I want it 
about finger width below center so that I can be cutting on center or a little bit above. Now I can gauge where this cut's going by this line here. I'll see, I don't want to go out past this. When I'm cutting the inside, I don't want to go out past the outside. You take a light cut because you hope you're gripping it with side grading. Now I use a one for all of these. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Now, see, I was sighting along this outside edge as I was doing it. So I still got to take some out of the inside here. So I'm about where I want to be on the, on the ends. So I just need to come in a little steeper angle. Just taking the time. Okay, so we got a little more come here. And that's the same, same cut you would use on the inside of a bowl. Okay, so we're fairly good here. So that's our outside thickness. Okay, well, I didn't drill my hole quite deep enough. So I'll just come back in and drill a little deeper. Why do you why do you drill your your first hole before you hollow it out? Because that way I don't have to cut that away that wood away. I don't have to cut. I'm cutting down to that hole. I guess you could do it the other way. I've just never did it that way. Let's go a little deeper. I think that's part of the 411 rule. The 411 different ways to do things. <laughs> yes. Okay, now I always make this hole one inch because. Where's it? Well. I'm always going to make the bottom with one inch to fit in here. Okay, now we're going to turn it back around. And these jaws will go to, down to just under one inch. Now, if you don't have these jaws, 
You can just make a jam chuck and fit in there. Now I use these jaws instead of step jaws because with, with that slope, step jaws don't come out far enough. Learn that lesson the hard way. Put it on there and then just tighten it up a little bit. And we'll put our live center back in. Okay, now I'm going to turn this down to my life, to the size of my life center. When I first started doing these, I figured to take weight from a smaller hole on the inside, just take the weight out. Well, I found out that wasn't a very good idea after I went through the sides numerous times. So I just drilled the one inch hole now. Give it a spin. Okay, so why is the leg on? No. Gotta get my senior technician in here. This is his lathe. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. I can't believe I can't believe you sabotaged my demo. <laughs> It ain't running, is it? No, it ain't even walking. <laughs> Where's the fuse? There we go. Now, how did you get? I got a little dust in the switch. <laughs> See, I knew we could handle it. <laughs> so now I'm going to take this down to the size of this. That was almost a very that. expensive uh, moment. It's not feeling anymore. Bob, are you naturally left-handed? Ooh, we got a little line here. I thought I'd gone through it. That's just a nasty, nasty cut. Okay, now what I will do is just use a scraper to sort of smooth that out. Just show you there's more than one way to skin a cat. And this is just a half inch scraper. Now scraper, I'll raise my tool rest up a little bit because I wanted it to angle like this. Not quite that much, but a little bit of an angle down because I'm cutting with this top edge here. Okay, now we got something we got to take care of. We'll have to sand this a little bit, but that's all right. 
we got to figure out how to get our, our eyeball eye in the top here, our screw. So we've got a little hole where this punched in, and we're going to get out our magic drill bit for small holes. which has many functions. And bend it like this. And it's just a paper clip, all it is. But it's exactly the same diameter as one of those little eyelets are. I didn't sharpen it, but I could. That's a whole nother adventure and just Push it in there like that. And now our eye screw will fit in there. And I keep little parts like that in one of these little Ziploc bags. You get the dollar and a quarter store, dollar and a quarter tree. Okay, let's see. I mean, clean this up a little bit. And go around and that over. I can put a little bead on the top of it. Okay, so we've got our top done. Put our screw in there. And old medicine bottles are great for put, keeping little parts like that in. And this is a lot easier to put in where I can turn it on the lathe than it is to try and twist the uh, screw itself. It's just much easier that way. Okay, so we got our top made. Now we're gonna do the body of it. All right, we used, we've got a one inch hole here and we're gonna put a one inch tenon on our body. And I'll do that on every one of them. That way what I can do is like, I might sit there and make a bunch of lids or a bunch of tops, and later on make, make a bunch of the bodies. And as long as I keep this uniform, then I can interchange them, just put them together when I want to put them together. So we're gonna use a piece of ambrosia maple for the body of it. I'll put my, Step center back in. I could either put it in my chuck like that, or I could take the chuck off and just put it in the drafts, the uh, headstock. We'll get it on center. So that's about the middle there. And uh, that's about the middle. And you don't have to start off with a great piece of wood. I mean, this is this, this is a corner of a bow blank. Looks like a pretty great no piece of wood, wood to me. Billy said it looks like a great piece of wood. Well, it's it is a great piece of wood, but, come from. but it's not like a kiln dried piece piece of wood that I bought. It's a piece of wood waiting to become famous. <laughs> now, what size is that, Bob? What size is it? It's uh, 
it's going to be about one and three quarters. It's going to be, it's got to be smaller than the, than the roof. The roof was about two inches. Let's see. The roof's two inches across, so this will be probably one and a half, one and three quarters, something like that. And if I don't get it exactly centered, it's going to be centered in a minute. And when I'm when I'm tightening my my tail stock, I like to have the handle on the tail stock over in the the far half. Let me zoom in on that. I like to have it over here or over here. If it's over here and it starts vibrating, it's gonna come, it's gonna be loose and your wood, wood might come off. If it's over here and it vibrated, it just would tighten it a little bit. So. Okay, so we're gonna round this off. Not round yet. Let's see where we need to take it down. Got that right there. Let's move this over in here a little bit. See if that's right. I think that's the right way. Be about right. Ooh, that is a cool looking piece of wood. Okay, we're going to put a tenon on this end. And I'm going to use my badan to do that. Since this is round, I could hold it, you know, while the uh, chuck was slowing down. If it wasn't round, I really wouldn't want to do that. Brenda, what kind of animal you see in here? It looks That's like a, a sloth from Ice Age. Sloth? <laughs> a sloth. With, with three eyes. I don't one's a nose. <laughs> I thought it was two eyes and a nose. They're just close together. Oh, one's a nose, yeah. It's a little lower. An abominable yeah. snowman. <laughs> Maybe it's oh, okay. just Groot. And there's an F right there. Yep, that was the first thing I seen was the F. Cousin it. Cousin okay, it. so we're going to put a one-inch tenon on here. Now, we could do a bunch of measuring to do that. Or we could take our one-inch drill bit and let it do the measuring.
Huh? Yeah. And since we drilled a hole with the one inch drill bit, if we mark this and go down to the one inch drill bit, it should come pretty close. If it doesn't, it's land's fault. <laughs> I'm just going to go in enough to score this. I'm not trying to drill a hole or anything. I'm just using it for marking purposes. It's got the squeakiness lead I ever heard. You're running very fast on the low speed codes. Oh, okay. Right, let's true this back up. It's got out of true when we mounted it. Okay, there we go, that should be good. Okay, now since we got this little slope here, we're gonna take advantage of that. We'll take our badan. Go ahead and just mark. Now, since I'm on worldwide television, I'm going to check and see if it fits. Glory be, it did. How about that? Who said there's no such thing as miracles? <laughs> now I'm going to use my spindle gouge. And I use the three eighths just because I like that size. You could use a half if you wanted to. And I'm going to put a little taper here. All right now, I'm going to start shaping my body. And this could be any number of shapes that you want. Round is a good one. So let's see what this ended up as. Just like I planted, one and three eighths inches. Exactly what I planned on. So this is gonna be the bottom right here. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for right now. Now what I'm gonna do is hollow it out. All right, but before I hollow it out, I wanna look at this and see where I want my perch to be and where I want my entrance to be. So here it's just sort of nothing. So here we've got some color. So why don't we put it right there in between those two stripes of color. Great idea. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> now we're going to hollow it out. And I use a three quarter inch drill bit. And I put a piece of tape on here. And uh, I marked it in quarter inch increments. And so I know, putting it here, that I want to go to about in between these two. Now I could get my calipers out and measure if I wanted to, or I could just sort of go between those lines and I'm gonna go between those lines. 
So we turn it up to about, about 400 again. And hold my, I'm gonna hold my chuck. No deeper than I'm going, I'm just gonna go straight in. There we go. Now, if it's a real big hole, like a hollow form or something, I might go in part way, then come back out, and clear it out. But you know, that's what two inches. Okay, so now we take a drill. The drill bit. I like to use a. Uh, Red point drill bit. Drill my entrance hole with. That piece is looking right real pretty. I love the green. Is there a question? I was just saying that piece is real pretty. I love the green. Billy said he loved the green. Well, thank you. You made it yourself. I made that green myself. <laughs> you can believe that I got some land some land in Florida I'll sell you what size drill bit was that I used to use a bread point drill this is a quarter inch drill bit I used to use a bread point for the eight, eighth inch but then I lost it so I don't use it anymore. Uh, we could either go to the side or go under. So let's go under it, about a quarter of an inch. And I sort of gave it a little push, the starting spot. Okay. Now, what size the drill we was went that? ahead and drilled these holes before we hollowed it, is because now I can see how thick it is while I'm hollowing it. I think he said eight inch, Brenda. Thank you, Bailey. Oh, okay. It was this is a quarter inch and this is an eighth of an inch. Thank you, Bob. And it'll be that on every one of them. <laughs> now you can buy all sorts of expensive hollowing tools, or you can get a piece of quarter inch square high speed steel and just ground it into a, into a scraper and use that. That's what I'm gonna use here. You're not, you're not hollowing out much wood. I say we can look at our hole here and tell how thick this is. This is still probably an eighth of an inch. So we'll take it down a little bit further. Okay, so that's about uh, a little over sixteenth of an inch, which that's fine. Maybe two sixteenths, uh, something like that. It's thin. 
Now I would go ahead and sand this, but watching people sand is almost as exciting as watching people hollow. So we'll pass on that. Unless y'all would like to watch me sand. Go ahead, sand go ahead and sand it, because if you don't sand it, you won't be able to put it back on and sand and use it. That's true. You got some sandpaper? Oh, 120. That's fine. So the so the door sandpaper he's got. So the Y'all door to your this. birdhouse is only a quarter of an inch. <laughs> yes. Okay, when I'm sanding, I'm gonna move my tool rest out of the way because I don't want to get my finger between the tool rest and the piece of wood. Yeah, that hurts. I read about that one time. I understand it's real painful. <laughs> Is that right up there with Turner's elbow? You you won't yeah. do it, but you won't do it but once. Oh, that's just smooth <laughs> as a baby's butt. It's incredible. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I just love this guy. I do. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna turn it off. Oh, we got one more thing we gotta do, y'all. Almost let me forget. We gotta drill a quarter inch hole through the bottom for the for the uh, video. I'd have been disappointed if y'all let me forget that. It's a very difficult task. Pretty cool idea to do it from this position, though. See, Billy saved the day on that, reminding me of it. That way you don't get tear out. Looks good. Now just cut the wood away. Now, if I was paid, I'd use a, use a skew to do this with. And it'd come out real nice. But since I'm bobbing, it'd probably come out, come out a big spiral across the top. They call that a design feature, Bob. <laughs> okay, we're getting down there. I turn my, whenever I move my tool rest, I turn my blade off. And I even do that at home when people aren't watching. Okay, it's getting small now. There we go. Okay, so that's going to be our bottom. Now we need to clean that up a little bit. So we got a tenon on it right here. And we ain't got much of a tenon, but we got a tenon. Last lecture for not having sandpaper on his leg. <laughs> He's just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to flatten that out a little bit right there. And that's where my finials will come in. So we got that done.
So, so far we have a, a roof and a mouth and a chin and two eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a, like a scarecrow. Yeah. He scarecrow. Can do it, Brenda. <laughs> and then we take a little piece of wood and it's just a little piece of cherry. Make our uh, finial with. Okay, so first thing is we'll put a little tenon on here. <laughs> That's about right. Use them up a dam to do that with. Might as well go ahead and flatten it out. Get it around while I'm at it. <coughs> Last week, uh, Lan and I were teaching at uh, John Campbell. And uh, they have the the Powermatic C model, and I've got the B model at home, and I must have reached a hundred times to hit that little red button on there. It's a little tidbit of useless information. <laughs> Are you going to uh, uh, tap the uh, hole for the finial and thread the uh, end of the finial to screw it in? Are you going to thread the finial? Yeah, I'm uh -huh, sure. <laughs> I'll put real fine threads. Yeah. Well, you I'm can just, thread it at, uh, just use a 40, quarter. 40 threads use, for use, inch. Use a quarter. For real. I don't do real fancy finials on these. I, you can, but I don't choose to. I'll bring my tool rest in a little closer. Actually, I'm going to put a doorbell on this, on this finial. He's making one long curve and say, I'm bringing my handle around to get a curve. And sort of clean that up a little bit.
Well, this is not a finial that would make Cindy Grosser proud, but that's all right. Will it make me proud, Bob? Okay, let's see if we get, see if it's round all the way around. Okay, and I got the threading right here. All right, now what you're gonna see now is both, we'll both be dazzle you and amaze you. And you see this and you'll say, oh, Bob, oh, Bob. Remember, we've got a quarter inch hole we want this to fit in. I'll sort of come in at an angle here. So what do we do? But we have a special quarter inch tendoning jig that we use, which is a wrench, quarter inch wrench. And it's ground. See, that's the regular part of it. And then this is ground back. It's sharp cutting edge there. And that gives us a quarter inch every time. Now we we'll just part this off. And that's our finial. So that fits right under here under our under our double chin. Oh, that's the <laughs> Okay, so now we got to do a perch. And what I do with my piece of wood for the perch? Here it is. See, I try not to waste big pieces of wood, so I can make a couple of perches out of this. Now this one we got to do some ciphering on. Because I have I've never been able to find an eighth of an inch wrench. And we'll take our calipers and set them on an eighth of an inch. Not a sixteenth, but an eighth. I tried to set it on sixteenth there first, then lock them down. Now I'm using my badan. Just get this round. There's not a lot of strength there, so I'm not putting much pressure on it. I can also use a gouge if I wanted to. A little knot on the end of it. Now, since I make all of these an eighth of an inch, and I make all the finials with a quarter of an inch. Sometimes I'll just make a bunch of bunch of uh, finials and a bunch of uh, perches, and then use them later. And 
And another tip, if you'll take your calipers and sort of round off this end here, then if you set it on here, it's not going to get stuck on there. And if it's those points there, it can fly back at you. And see, if I had me an eighth of an inch wrench, this would be a lot quicker. Okay, so there we go. Now we was, you know, do a little sanding on that. And then we'll cut it off. I'm just going to take my badam and turn it this way. And that's going to go in there like that. And there's our birdhouse. Awesome. Waiting on a, a homeless bird. Very that nice. Is nice. Great, That's fantastic. Great, great demo, Bob. Very, Very nice. Waiting on this, Bob. That was really I've been waiting on this. Very like, nice. For two years I've been waiting on this. And I might, like I said, I mean, <laughs> all of these, this will always be an inch, and this will always be an inch. So I can make them separate. Like, this will always be an inch, and this will always be an inch. This will always be a quarter inch. This will always be a quarter inch. This will always be an eighth of an inch. And that way I can make the parts separately and then put them together later if I want to, if I just want to make a certain part instead of going through and making the whole thing. Yeah, it, it really, that, really, it, that really enables production mode, eh? Right. So what? That enables production. Right. I could do, you know, like one day last week, I did like four or five of these and, and didn't do any of these. And I did, you know, later on, I did some of these and I just... Mix them and match them and put them together, and you're good to go. Talk about efficiency. Great. I like the little it's knot on the. Uh... Say, Bob, any chance we could take a look at that uh, Halloween uh, scraper that you had there, please? Sure. <laughs> it's a piece of quarter inch high speed steel square, and then it's just ground round here. Oh, cool. And then I can also, if I use, I use it in a collet, which you don't have to, but if you use it in a collet, you know, he's got a beading parting tool on the other end. Neat. You know, or that could be a skew on the other end. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Enjoy the demo. Thank you. I enjoy yeah, doing it. Good. Can we uh, can we sharpen can we sharpen this on a diamond wheel or or the yes, carbon sure. steel with a note? Yeah, it's high speed steel. Yeah, you can use yeah, your nice. you can use you can your CBM wheel, diamond wheel or grinding stone, anything on high speed steel. And you can get those in six inch leaks from Little Machine Shop. You can get them from Amazon, or you can get them from Little Machine Shop or MSC Direct. MSC Direct. McMaster card, WT tools. You can also get them round as well. If you, yeah, you can get them round too. And if you work at a place that has them, you can get them out of the supply cabinet. <laughs> That's a good idea. I didn't work at a place that had them though, so I had to order it. Hey. Bob, Bob, this is Mark Soleil. Uh, hey, Mark, back. how you doing? We'd go back a long way, and uh, that was a very, very, very good demo. Well, and thank you. Uh, if anybody is interested, right, uh, I'll give you a challenge, right, that you can go ahead and you can thread the top, you can thread the perch, and you can thread the finial. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, if, you could, if you wanted to, if if you wanted to, you could thread this. And thread this and make a box out of it. Exactly. But yeah. oh, what I'm saying is if anybody would like to see that tonight, later on, I'll go to my little case and I will uh, I will get one and uh, and uh, display it or show it, tell it. But you are the birdhouse man. And I'm, I'm very proud of you. You have done so much and excellent work in wood turning over the years. I'm really, very, very, very proud of you. Thank you. It's fun. They're fun to do. 
Okay, I'm going to throw this in the fire right now. Safety Sue, does he get the top honors for safety tonight? Took his ring off, wearing safety thought, glasses, had a I shield. Thought, he he did and fantastic. I I noticed that, Bob. I noticed it. Safety glasses plus his face shield turned on the lathe whenever he was changing things around. Also, no, he didn't. Sure, sure that the speed was uh -oh. down all the way. And when he uh, turned yeah. the lathe back on, he brought the speed up. He did and a great job. Underwear. Okay. And no gloves. I'm glad you changed the underwear, though. <laughs> <laughs> TMI, TMI. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did a great job. Very I good, Bob. Really enjoyed the demo. And shoes. Yes. And shoes. Okay. You know, we don't yeah. wear shoes in the South a whole lot, but I wore them tonight because it's cold. Well, I don't blame you. I you've you've got gray shoes on. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank y'all. Any questions about Bob? I got a comment. Jump. Oh boy. <laughs> the perch. I like that little knob you put on the perch. That way when birds get drunk, uh -huh. they don't fall off as easy. They don't fall off the end. Yeah. Yeah. I like see, if, cool. see, in the south, when it snows, it, it warms up during the day and then it freezes at night, it turns to ice. So you put that knob on there so they don't slide off the end of their purse. Slide off, yes. <laughs> you better not have a little tiny wine glass on your birdhouse next week. <laughs> you can use it for a gear shift, too. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. I love your birdhouses. The wine's inside. Make sure you paint it with non-skid so they won't slide on it. There you go. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'll, I'll remember that next time. <laughs> Some of those little uh, de decorative uh, I love roses, whatever, like you put in your really bathtub, great. but the little bitty, bitty ones. Um, <laughs> this is a very timely demonstration tonight, folks. Members, we have a birdhouse challenge next Thursday, next Wednesday, pardon me. Uh, we're going to, we're, we have a, a demonstration scheduled with Scott Hampton, but our gallery next week, we would like it to be concentrated on birdhouses. And if you would please take a photograph of your birdhouse and email it to worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. Worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. And then I'll use your photographs in a special promo that I'll produce uh, immediately following the demonstration next week in the meeting, because uh, we want to show what design opportunities we have what we think about what we shift into gear see bob gave you techniques he gave you techniques all the way through tonight it was no watch what i can do it was watch what you can do and that's why we got bob to do this because this is going to help you with so many things i mean you don't have to you don't have to be turning birdhouses in order to use these techniques uh apply this to turning a bowl, turning a vase, turning a, a small jar or whatever. He, Bob showed you techniques, holding, cutting, dressing, and all that. And we'd like to see more of that from you. Really, members, we'd like to see more of that from you. And uh, uh, Bob, it was awesome. I very much appreciated. Uh, you did a wonderful job, sir. And thanks to the AV guy. He did pretty good, Thank too. You. He did. He's outstanding. Yes. yes. Bob, better bring him in. Bob? Yeah? I got a couple of wrenches here for you. <laughs> All right. There you One go. Eight inch? <laughs> one's three sixteenths and one's that? five thirty seconds. One each side of an eighth of an inch. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Let me give you my address. You can send those to me. <laughs> they're they're old fashioned ignition wrenches. Now we gotta find them a one eighth inch Brad Point drill bit. Okay, check it, check That's it, right. your stock, guys. Come on. <laughs> I found a quarter inch one at a junk store this past weekend. <laughs> for, for that one eighth inch side, I simply took a, uh, a grinding wheel, a little small uh, grinding wheel, 
and I, and made one, measured one eighth and just ground it and, and just ground it on this little small uh, cutting disc. Or drill a hole in a What'd piece of fire stock and make your own. I tried making one one time, but it was sort of a strange one eighth of an inch. <laughs> <laughs> Again, fantastic demonstration, Bob. Really Thank good. You. Really appreciate the effort you yeah, went through and what you're doing today. You're going to be the flight controller next week when all these fly in? <laughs> oh, I will. I will. I want to see them. You weren't in earlier when we saw, uh, wait, one of our members showed us a birdhouse he's working on, and it's going to be a next week's challenge. And um, yeah, I wonder if we can see another glimpse of that. Um, if he's still out there, can't see it on the chart, not the 80 images. But if you dare say I'm here and let's show Bob that birdhouse, it was really, really nice. A lot of carving, a lot of detail work, a lot of great ideas. I think you'll have smoke hanging out, smoke coming out of it and everything. All right. Maybe we lost that member tonight. He'll pop back in. All right, folks, this is WorldWideWoodTurners.org, and we enjoy sharing information with each other and bringing wood turning to the front of many of you, your, your wood turners' lives, and we enjoy what we do. We invite you to be part of this. If you'd like to perform a demonstration with us on our club, uh, Bob did it this week, Doug Miller did it last week, and yada, 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 yada. We keep getting members that will give us th these technique programs and we enjoy them. You can do it too. And don't think you have to have an AV guy and switchers and all that. Doug Miller pulled it off last week with the iPhone. And that was an excellent demonstration. And it's available on our website. That's where the stuff goes. To the world's greatest wood turning website. No exaggeration. It just happens to be the world's greatest wood turning website. And if you send us something to share with folks, it'll get shared there. <laughs> Remember, if you want to send us photographs, send it to worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. I can get them, use them, and I forward them on to Doug, mm -hmm. I mean, to Dave, our master webmaster. Oh, wow. um, next Thursday, next Wednesday is our, I want to say Thursday, because Thursday is a turkey day. <laughs> next Wednesday is our birdhouse competition, our challenge. We would like to see your work everybody's invited there are no limitations no restrictions no judging and remember we have that no but guarantee no buts show us your art we'd love to see it now let's talking about art we do gallery each week and we may have some openings right now but before that i saw a note here a few minutes ago i have to go back to it and make sure i get this right um, just bear with me a little bit because we had a lot of chat on the on the uh, internet tonight. But I see Heather's with us. Good evening, Heather. Um, oh, here we go. Tim Hatch. Tim Hatch out of Texas. Tim, I understand you just had a new delivery. Is that true? Uh, not yet, Eddie. I'm picking it up this weekend, I hope. Either either this weekend or early next week. But the wife you is blessed it. off of it, and I'm I'm finally gonna get it. So <laughs> all right. Sweet. Tim's getting a new life this week. Congratulations. Right. What yeah, kind are you getting? What kind you. are you getting? Um I'm going with uh you know, Billy Burt suggested that Powermatic uh 2014, which is about as big boom as I can get in my shop because I got so much other crap. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with that, and uh, I'll add the uh, uh, bed extension that'll give me a little bit longer reach there and able to do some more stuff. So, won't be disappointed. No, I think you're gonna love it, Tim. Mm -hmm. I was I was kicking kicking it around between that and that Laguna 1836, and I I just can't. Can't uh, really see myself with the Laguna when the Powermatic's available. So, yep. All right, great. Good to see that, Tim. I always like to see when we got a new member, no, a new child in the family. Um, 
Scott Hampton says next week he'll be teaching how to make some fun ornament. I- icicle ornaments during the demo next week. Icicle ornaments. It's going to venture into that holiday time. We'd like to see more of that. We do gallery yeah. each week. And if you have something to show on gallery, all you have to do is go over there to the chat. Type in, I have something. And Brenda will call on you and you can show it. But here's the rule. You got to start talking when Brenda starts talking about you. Otherwise, we can't find you. There's, what, 80-something people in there right now? It's hard to find them. So let's get some some gallery going. Yeah, Eddie, we got four guys on the list right now. So let's go to Billy Burt. Oh, yeah. well. Oh. Oh. Wake up, Billy. I'm awake. Um, <laughs> and, and we have light. Well, the first two are, aren't turnings. The, the, <clears throat> apparently not. The, the first two aren't really turnings, but they spawned a turning. Uh, these are compound cut on my scroll saw. Uh, wow, this one, cool. this was, this is the prototype. It was a piece of two by four, or actually a piece of two by two uh, uh, pine. And the little flower is a tiny acorn that I I glued into it. Like I said, this was the prototype. Uh, I wanted something just a little bit bigger. So I had a a 12-inch cherry spindle blank. And it, it, I've had it for many, many years and never figured out what to do with it. So I made another one. And uh, this one's a little bigger. This the, the spindle blank measured an inch and seven eighths. And let me tell you, trying to cut that depth of, uh, <laughs> of hard, dry cherry, I broke two blades. Anyway, oh it uh, but it it came out really nice, and my wife found me these nice little bottle brush Christmas trees at the grocery store on display, and so she brought <laughs> some home, and I put one in there. Now, but it, it that those spawned an idea. I thought, well, they look kind of like inside out turnings, and I've done my share of inside out turnings, but what if I were to take that same spindle blank? And turn the finials and then do the scroll saw work. So, ah, there you go. Oh my gosh. So, oh I did gosh. just that. Uh, she also found me a nice, cute little Santa Claus, and I thought he fit in there just, just really nice. The problem uh, the upper part of the finial turned out, the upper finial, I mean, turned out just fine. The bottom finial, while I was turning it, if you've seen the video, it broke. Mm. Uh, I had a pin blank that I glued up out of cross-cut mesquite. Uh, It was quartered. I mean, there was four sections of it, but it was all glued up uh, out of uh, mesquite. It was glued up GC style. If you've ever seen the GC Brothers pins. Uh, I had planned on making a GC Brothers style pen out of it, but I never did. And I used that piece of mesquite for the finial and I put it on the lathe and turned it. And I'm pretty happy with it. And my wife's really happy with all three of them. She claimed them. <laughs> yes. And now somebody, somebody said, well, are you going to be demoing this technique where you turn and scroll and, uh, uh, no, I don't know, especially out of cherry, uh, it's hard stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I want to do another one because it gave me some fits. It was a challenge. It was a lot harder than I had envisioned it was going to do, but, or be, but y'all know me. I get harebrained ideas and just try all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> That's why we love you. <laughs> thank you, Billy. Thank you. Really right, good. Thanks, thank Billy. You. Thanks, Billy. Let's go to Tim Hatch. Back to Tim. All right. Well, um, so for that uh, little craft uh-huh. show we did, I made I made this ornament here. It's all pecan, and I got a hold of Mark Soleil and said, "Hey, could you send me some of that Parfex? I want to try it." So this is the first time 
I've used Parfex 3408 and Vonix. What did you uh, I think? Th I think it it there's no stain on that. It's all natural. Mm -hmm. Well, it's shiny. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking that Parfex on on this stuff. And uh, raise it up. We can't see your finial. There you go. Very nice. Oh, nice. thanks. Yeah. So that that's uh that's the little thing I'm giving them ladies. To let me do the demo at that art show a week or two ago. So, but uh, other than that, um, that that's all I got. I haven't been turned. I've got uh, a bunch of other projects. We're in the process of painting the house and and whatnot. So, uh, honey dews, honey dews. So well, nice my, job, Jim. I can get my way nice. then. <laughs> yeah. Great yeah. job, Jim. All right. Nice. Thank you. All right, let's go to Jim Selby. All right, I've got a uh, Claro walnut box that I made. And uh, whoops. Pull it oh, back okay. towards you, Jim. Towards you. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah. Claro, it's, it's made out of Claro walnut. And uh, then I, Dean had made some of these. Yeah. And, uh, Guy across the street cut a tree down, so I got some branches. Nice. Very nice. Yes. Yep. Those are pretty easy, Doc. Cute. <laughs> Thanks. That's it. Thanks, Jim. That's cool, Jim. Jim. Very nice, Jim. All right, let's go to Jim <laughs> Duxbury then. Okay. I've um, got a couple bowls. Well, I'll show these. These are pewter rings. Let me do a screen share. You can see them better on that. Uh, hmm. Hey, Jim, how are you anchoring the pewter into the wood? Oh, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> can you see that? Yes. The, the pewter ring on the top is poured. And instead of, it's not a glue down ring. That actually has a dovetail into the wood, except the dovetail, I did this before I turned the bowl and the dovetail comes up into the pewter so that the dovetail is actually up in the pewter, saving me pewter, okay? That's a great idea. Wow, mm -hmm. okay. Not only, not only that, when it, when it cools, it shrinks and it shrinks onto that dovetail, and that thing's on there. That's a... I am nice. totally gonna have to try that. That's a wonderful nice. idea. Nice. Yeah, you, you do it before you before you turn the bowl, plow a, a groove in there, you know, and then, uh, but actually cut the groove shy and then cut down both sides of it to make a dovetail. It really works nice. That's the bottom of it. This is the other side. And it ties the bowl together too, if it was weak. This one's a side grain. This is a bugger to do. You have to build this up slowly uh, in three quarter inch increments. If you ever try this, uh, pay attention. There's pewter has a lot of surface tension. And when it runs off, the entire glob runs off. It could end up in your shoe. Um, it's you got to. You only do it once. You'll remember it the second time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's you just do this. Uh, you build a little dam and build about three quarters of an inch, and you work another three quarters of an inch, and you work your way around there. If you start going more than that, it, it the whole darn thing drops off. So. Mm -mm. Hey Jim, what do yeah. you think about what do you think about using pewter on a void in a piece of wood? Like clean it out instead of doing a resin inlay, do a pewter inlay. What do you think of that? Hmm, you'd have to key it in there somehow. It's just a plug of metal. So uh, if right. you can key it in there, yeah, it's it it works. Um I've got another one of these things I did years ago. Um and that tied the top of it together. But uh, yeah, I don't know how you do it, just the hole. Uh, on this other one, uh, there was a hole in the side of this right here. So I drilled the hole out and I cut a little slot 
And uh, while I was pouring, it went down in there and uh, it'd be a neat way to enhance things, <laughs> you know. Mm. Wow. Did, well, you can can you melt pewter, Jim, in a mm. in an electric lead pot, like for making uh, mm -hmm. what fishing weights or whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, yeah. Uh, I started doing this with a soldering iron. I got a huge soldering iron that's hanging on a spring, and I do it. I do it drop by drop, just about. But I went to buy a lead pot, and I guess they're using them to make bullets and whatever else. And right. uh, there was like a six month wait for the lead pot, and then you weren't sure you're going to get it. Wow. So uh, I started doing it this way. But the, the neat part of this is you 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 actually turn the the slot before you make the bowl. Right. And then you've got a, a form for the whole thing. I don't Very know what nice. Else. I don't know what else I got on here, but this works really nice, and it 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 really. It changes the weight of the bowl or the piece. When you pick a, uh, a wooden bowl up, you have a feeling of how much it's going to weigh. Right. And when you got a pewter ring on the top, it weighs about 10 times more on the top. When you pick it up, it, it's like, yeah. oh, my God, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a lead ring on the top, you know. Wow. So, so you're melting Beautiful. that. So you're melting that pewter one drop at a time or you know a, a little bit of a time and drop a little it a little bit at a time yeah Tell them what you're doing. Uh, and then you come That's, back and turn it Tell and then i go doing. back and turn it yeah it turns okay. really nice Tell them you get the um, i i i bought this this is low temperature pewter i forget what they call that but anyway it was expensive this is high temp this is regular pewter and i wanted to see if it was going to stain the board or anything and and it I think if you did it in a lead pot, it may char the board a little bit. But uh, I buy the pewter. I go to Goodwill and Salvation Army. I buy all the bent up goblets. You know, <laughs> nobody wants a bent goblet. <laughs> melt, melt yeah, that's, a, that's a good idea for source material, though. I melt all this stuff up and mix it up, and who knows what it is. But anyway, it, it comes out great. What do you use to dam it? Um, I think it's just a little block of wood. I can't remember what I used. A little block of wood and a piece of tape, I think. The same with this. I think I put a little block of wood in here and a piece of tape, and it just filled the middle. And then uh, I just, I cut this on a table, so I just ran it through the table, so I skinned the top off. But this is the high temperature stuff, and this is, I can't remember what they call this, but it's expensive and it's it's a lower temperature, much lower temperature. Hmm. You can put you can melt pewter on the kitchen stove in a pot. I, I, yeah, I think, yeah, or a hot plate. I use a hot plate. Hot, hot plate will work fine too on pewter. Be careful. I get, I get my pewter from pewter the junk. Buy. It may have lead in it. I get my pewter from the junkyard. Uh, I don't think you can buy pewter anymore. The, the new pewter, none of that has lead in it. That's yeah, but if you're buying old stuff, it may have lead. Oh, yeah. Yep. You buy old stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But it sure works nice. Um, anyway, I'm going to do more of those someday. I'm going to do a lot of things anyway. Someday. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. I'm going to do a lot of things someday. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. That's, that's nice. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Jim. That was awesome. Yeah. Beautiful stuff, Jim. Thank you. All right, let's go to Mark Soleil. <laughs> Find him. Okay. Can you see me? There he is, yep. Okay. Uh, I'll go out to my shop so I can put my iPhone down and I'll show you this little uh, uh, threaded birdhouse. It might give people a little idea for their. Uh, for their deal next week, but it's not a what we call a production item because it takes a little time. Uh, I go to somebody else. I'll go out to my shop and get set up here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just, oh, we got just, Doug Rowe. Doug Rowe's got something for us. That way I can hold my... Professor Rowe, Professor Rowe, you there? There he is. Here. 
What's happening, y'all? <laughs> it's been forever since I've been to one of these club meetings. Um, so the bowling ball thing, still working on them. And uh, where's my thing to turn my phone around? So what's cool for me for this one was I mounted this the way that Cade had recommended after I'd done my last demo. And if you all remember, when I'd done mine, I started it off between centers. And, and it was really not hard, but tedious to find that balance point. And Kate had said after the demo, don't use two points. Just take your, uh, take your um, stuff out of the spindle and find a flat one for the uh, tail stock. And so I did. Now, this one I've already turned to tendon. But what I'm doing now, based on what Kate told me, no chuck, uh, nothing in there, just the spindle. You put the ball right up against it. And then I got a live center with the, the spear taken out or the point taken out. And so it really just kind of conforms right to the ball. And you find true pretty quick. And you don't have to take as much of the side, the outside of the bowl off to get it round, maybe just a little. And so anyway, I tried it on this one and it worked out really well. My sister uh, had been visiting up from Phoenix and she wanted me to make a few of these for friends that she wants to give out at Christmas time. And apparently she raided all of the thrift stores in Phoenix and just I brought a <laughs> bowling balls. So oh, one way or the other, I'm going to get good at this. Um, <laughs> but this one went so much smoother um, because of what Kate had said on how to mount it. Now, I did wind up breaking the tenon on this one um, when it was in the chuck, but that was on me. I just got too aggressive when I got in there and I got a catch. And then I just went ahead and sanded it all off. And so it's going to work out fine. It'll make a fine yarn bowl for somebody. But uh, that'll be the, the next one. So, anyways, I'm just having fun with bowling balls. I miss you all. Uh, I wish I could be in here every week, but I took on this new job and I'm having a lot of fun doing that too. Yeah. Well done. We've missed you. Good Doug. seeing you, Doug. Yeah, we miss you, Doug. And if anybody is still wanting to get pens out there, um, I can still get them out to the troops. If you want to get them before Christmas, I'd need to get them here, well, before Christmas. Um, <laughs> but I can do that for you if there's any anybody out there holding on to any that you want to get out there. All right. Great. All right, let's see if we can find Tom Kenny again. Here I am. There he is. Uh, Jim mentioned that he was using some pewter and to, to great effect. I've experimented a little bit with it, and to polish the pewter, if you want it to come out with almost like a chrome-like finish, try some aluminum polish. This is for polishing uh, the wheels on your car. And uh, you, a couple dabs of this, and it boy, it just glows. It shines up so shiny. And uh, I believe I got this in the automotive section at Walmart, uh, fairly inexpensive. I think it was five or six dollars. Give that a try if you're going to try the pewter. It's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, I might cool. try that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tom. Do you, Tom. Make it, do, do you sure. lacquer over it? Do you lacquer it when you get done? I didn't do nope. that. No, I didn't. Okay. Okay. I, I'm ready. If anybody wants to see this. This is Mark. Okay, let's go to, um, can we go to Joaquin first? Okay. Okay. Um, Where's he well, at? Where are we at? I don't see me on there, am there I? On? I see you. Yeah, I see you now. Okay, all right. Uh, every year I do these uh, sea urchin uh, finials and turn uh, ornaments, and you, I've been going to, and I get all these from Cindy. Cindy's got a great selection of them. And I've been going to do some earrings out of them, get smaller than this, get all smaller and do earrings. I ain't got around to do that yet. <laughs> and it didn't. Hey, but, uh, too. 
ma'am. Did you did you make that tree there too? Well, th this is a uh, angel. No, I mean the the, the, the ornament tree. Yeah, the ornament tree. Oh no, it's just a it's a metal rack for you can get them at Hobby Lobby and stuff just to hang stuff. Oh, you bought it that way. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, so then I had a mentor who showed me how to turn an offset duck. And I thought, well, I had to try this offset duck again, see if I could see <laughs> Oh, that's cute. Cute. Yeah. That's so it, it's turned off two different centers, and uh, I think it's pretty cute. Yes, that is pretty cool. I like that. All right. Uh, and we, 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 I used uh, a couple of your pieces in our promo that's up today. Yeah. In fact, you're the headliner. I am. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'm looking you forward to going to some of these trees. I mean, these uh, birdhouses uh, next week. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Good. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go back to Mark Soleil then. Okay. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? There you That's go. It. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Go ahead. Oh, okay. We hear you. Okay. I put I put the uh, iPhone in the uh, uh, place where you can see it. Okay. This has a little natural edge roof. It's a piece of a limb, right? And it has a little. Uh, a little uh, perch and it has a finial. So when you open it up, <laughs> wow, it is threaded. Oh, that's cool. Man. Think about it, Brenda. That could be a secret compartment. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And now the finial. Oh man. Is threaded. Wow. Oh, Beautiful crap. I would love to learn how to uh, thread. And the, and the perch is threaded. What? Oh, my. What about now the, the finial, top finial? The finial and the perch, are those boat threads, Mark? Yes. Okay. No, 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 they're they're hand chased. Okay. That is little for hand. Yeah, it is. Oh my God. And yeah, I would I would have to cheat and use bolt threads. Yeah, I would too, Billy. <laughs> well, you can you can drill you can drill your 316th hole or 1364. So then you can just put a quarter 20 tap in there. And then you can do this, you know, with quarter 20. Okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. I hope you know, does everybody know that you can cut a bolt in half and you uh, and you can thread on the right side of the bolt, you can make the male threads and on the left side of the bolt, you can make the female threads. Do you know how to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, here, let me nope, go to you my- No, you lost me, you lost me. I can okay. see it. Okay, hang on just a minute. I'll be right back. I got to get it out of- Drawer. Because I've <laughs> used number eight bolts and ground yeah. three slots in them to make taps before. Yeah. Now the pipe fitter made pipe. Anyway, thread, thread anyway the world. I want to tell you the guy who made this and gave it to me, his name is Chris Woodall. He's a great wood turner and a soccer coach. But uh that that stays in my little trophy case. Okay, if you take a bolt, this is a, uh, uh, a 3 8 16 threads per inch bolt. If you grind it in half, right, then if you take the left side and you go in, you know, do your little rhythm, you can go ahead and chase your threads. On the inside, that be the, the female would be on the left as you go in. And then on the right, you put your male threads on on the right with your little escape chamber up there that you make. And you just do it by hand. 
Wow. And that's, that's, how you, that's, that's a threading machine. Yeah. And that's that guy's cool. That's genius. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Anyway, uh, uh, you know, I stay busy all the time with students and everything, but uh, uh, I appreciate you folks uh, on the Worldwide Wood Turners. And uh, this is an ash bowl that I'm finishing for a, a fellow that's coming tomorrow for lunch. He's got cancer. And uh, so uh, I'm trying to finish up a thing that he had. That he had, it was all cattywampus. And so I'll have it finished for him tomorrow. But uh, you guys are doing good. And I'll see y'all on November 30th. I'm going to, I'll get crazy. And do uh, <laughs> I, I love it when he says he'll get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but Bob, you. you've made so many birdhouses. There's your challenge. <laughs> love that. That is cool. That's awesome. Yeah. But if, if you take, you know, if you have a lot of the little dry branches, they're perfect as they look, the bark, I like the bark on yes. them, you know? Yeah. But anyway, uh, let somebody else get on. All right. Thanks, Mark. All right. So much knowledge, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Good idea. There's All Christmas right. tree man. <laughs> What's that birdhouse, Bob? That's Christmas tree man up there. <laughs> Christmas tree man. Joaquin. Yeah. He's Joaquin. What? What do you have? We'll do one. Christmas tree man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have made a bunch of them this year. <laughs> All right. Who's up? Who's that gallery? Good hey, Jeff. Jeff. There's Jeff, I see him. Got me. Oh, there. Who's that? There he is. Yeah, I was going to, um, I mentioned earlier about the wind chime and posted the information on uh, Lee Height, who I, I, based on what I read, was a like an acoustical engineer and came up with this whole program on how to size wind chimes. And that's yes. who I used to make mine. And that's my chime. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, the beautiful. longest tube is is a little over 50 inches long. 50? And, yeah, 50 wow. inches. Wow. And it's made out of um, aluminum tubing. It's an inch and seven eighths, and it has an eighth inch wall. And the striker is is wood turned. Oh, I love the tone. And, and yes. then over the top, I have to hang everything is all, you know, wood turned pieces as well. Um, right. But, but, I don't know if you can hear that. It's not distorted. Oh, that's but... gorgeous. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, great wow. tone. Yeah. And, and they told you to put the wind, the, the walker piece or whatever at the bottom like that? Uh, there's several different uh, schools of. Did we lose you? We lost your sound. There we are. Okay, he's back. You're muted, Jeff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm unmuted now. Sorry, I'm using my iPhone. Okay. Not not savvy on it. Um, there's several different schools of thought on, uh, and he outlined the best tone based on what I read and, and some of the demos that he provided. Uh, striking it at the bottom uh, provides the best tone. So there's dimensions on where the striker should be at the bottom. So, you know, my tubes, generally when you see these commercially, all the tubes are, they're even at the top. And so they're staggered at the bottom. Right. Right. Um, but I hung mine so that I could keep them even at the bottom and strike them at the bottom. But I think it's mm. all really just based on your ear and how, you know, what you, what you think sounds good. I had at one time a, uh, the striker was um, sort of like a star pattern so that there was a point in each one, whoops, there was a point between each chime. And so when, when it would spin, uh, horizontally it would strike all the all the um the chimes at one time yeah just you know depending on how the wind catched it would catch yeah. it but uh it, it's you know it was really fun to build also the, the dimension on where you hang it uh makes a difference in the tone as well so if you can't oh. really hang them all in the same spot because they won't ring true to the note that you select I'll uh, be but, 
Um, there's a whole program that the, that gentleman had that you can. Uh, what what was the, the uh, what was the name of the gentleman that uh, you had the information for? Yeah, his name is Lee Height. H i h i t e. It's LeeHeight.org. Um, and then slash. on his page, there's a whole wind chime section. Yeah, uh, slash chime, chime, chime but, TM. Yeah, the um, there's a kind of a configurator page where you can put in a bunch of parameters on how you uh, you want it to sound, the number of chimes, the key you want it to be in. It's really extravagant on the different mm. options uh, you can come up with. But uh, I like I was saying, I found the tubes in a scrapyard. I think there were probably like aluminum tubes that you use that um, like boat builders would build the big, tall, you know, uh, platform extensions on top of their boats. Uh, there was okay. a whole pallet of it. I think I paid forty five dollars for enough to build two of these. And if you were to buy that commercially, um, Weatherford Chimes, I can't remember the name of the other one, but that's probably a, you know, three or four hundred dollar wind chime if you were to buy that, you know, with the nice anodized tubes and all that. But right. Wow. So it was fun to build. I have another set of tubes to build another chime a little bit shorter than that one. But um, this one's great. It's actually yes. here in West Texas. It's very windy. And so I have to, when the wind picks up, I usually at night, I'll take the striker off of it because my neighbors don't, I don't know how they, they uh, like the wind time or not, but I take it off. It's really loud. Yes. Well, thanks, Jeff. That was a lot of help. Sure. Yes. So, and then you can, you can incorporate, you know, like I said, the striker and the top plate and you, right. know, you can get really fancy and decorative with wood turning. Um, so Yes. Did you see mine last week? Was it last week or the week before? I made. I a did not. House. Made a birdhouse and put wind chimes on it. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So, my girlfriend's seen it and she's like, "Oh, I gotta have one of them too." So okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the tubes. I use little tubes that I found in a cupboard out in the garage. So yeah. I know where I got those at. Well, the, I can't find them more. <laughs> you can also, if you're you know, in a pinch, do something that's you know less expensive you could also use the emt conduit that you can buy at the box store for doing electrical conduit that that works as well it doesn't have a good you know a, a solid long ring like a lot of other materials but, you know for to build a wind chime it will work hmm i thought they'd be too heavy okay um yeah i mean you know those tubes are fairly heavy as well i mean it's because they're so long but um right. You certainly, that program, the, uh, the Lee Height, his website, uh, he does have some dimensions uh, on different types of conduit as well, if you want to use those types of tubes. Okay. Uh, Billy Clark posted the Lee Height organization, uh, Lee Height ORG, uh, on our chat tonight. So save the chat, folks, the information's there. Yeah, yes. I, put, I, tagged the, I tagged the website earlier um, uh, in the in the session today too. Yes. So. You're you're a nice guy, Jeff, to take the uh, striker off. I'd, I'd let it ring all night long for my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's bad. I can, I mean, I can, I lived out in, in, the, in, in the country in Tennessee for a long time and I had made that while I lived there about four years ago, I think it was. And, you know, it was great. I just left it out hanging up under a tree and, you know, I didn't have any neighbors that were close. So, it was great, but now I live in a in a neighborhood, and you know I can hear it inside my house. Uh, you know, at the front okay. of the house, and it's at the back of the house. So I, I was like, well, I need to be a little bit considerate because it's it's certainly uh, you can certainly hear it from a good ways away. Wow, wow. Well, thanks, Jeff. Let's uh, let's move on to Bill Louch. Thank you. Thank good you. evening, gentlemen, ladies. Um, a couple of months ago, I was helping a, a neighbor lady clean up some old uh, uh, firewood, uh, stacks of firewood she had around the place. And as we were going through it, we were cutting some of it up because it was it was in uh, fairly long lengths. And we found some stuff that the heartwood was red. And uh, I said, well, we can't burn that. And it was all quite small, mostly branches. But this is a, a vase made out of what we think was maybe... Plum. 
don't know for sure, hey. but Ready. It's, Beautiful. it's, it's uh, really nice wood. It, it cuts like maple. So it's, you know, when you, when you cut it through a saw, the ends are, are nice and smooth. <laughs> it finishes lovely. Yes. Um, so I've got five or six pieces. Uh, so I made that one and then out of a smaller piece, I made uh, uh, wood like so. Oh yeah. Nice. I'm, um, I'm economical. I, I, I uh, on both of them, you know, to get rid of the bark, you to wind up with about a half of the wood. So I don't ever yes. do that. And this is what they were intended to be, little uh, flower bosses. Yes. So, Those are really pretty. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful wood. Um, the sticks okay. are just little bits of, of uh, torched bamboo. And um, looks quite nice, I think. Uh, the, the other thing I have is uh, a piece of... Uh, of um, spalted uh, big leaf maple burl. Oh, nice. Uh, Lovely. Uh, with uh, the the top was a, a regular piece of maple and I thought it was pretty blah, so um, painted it um, gold. Um, a, one of our local wood turners is uh, very talented in, in the painting and she was showing us at a club meeting a couple of weeks ago how to do uh, feathering um, and said it was easy. Um, it's not. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> after having decided that the feathering didn't work, I painted the whole thing gold. <laughs> and so we have mm -hmm. a little nice save. <laughs> Very, Very nice. nice. That's great. Yeah. I love that bowl. That's it for tonight. Very nice. Very, Very nice. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if we can find Glenn. Glenn Nordak. Got him. There you are. You're he muted. was muted, though. Yep. There he is. I'm you, Glenn. There, there you go. go. Okay, I've got a couple of things to show. I've got a couple of the the Joaquin style leaning uh, Christmas trees upturned. We had that our that was our club challenge this this past month. So this one's out of. Uh, this one's out of mesquite. And then I did another one, uh, got another one out of uh, out of oak. This was from my uh, oak tree from my front yard. And uh, and then I got a little, then a little small, uh, a little small birdhouse. Yeah. Hey. Uh, and, uh, I've got more, I have more, but I'll, so I'll save those for next week. <laughs> but, but, but the roof, but the roof, I, I just uh, uh, used that with uh, with a wood burning tool. It looks good. Oh, nice. Oh. Very nice. Very good. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. You're welcome. All right. Do we got any more gallery items? Come on, we got a little time. Pop in there. I could show a piece. Well, I'll, I'll show one more piece. Who's that? Yeah. I saw. Right, let me. Who? Uh, Jim. Jim Dexbury. Jim Dexbury. You got me? I'm high. Yeah, I'm spotlighted. I'm now now you're <laughs> Joaquin did a oh. duck. Where are we? Oh. There we go. I had to show you this, Joaquin. I <laughs> Being a Duxbury, you got to have ducks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This is turned on four centers. There's a center here, a center here, here, and here. So it's What's turned the on. bottom. What's on the bottom? Is that a wine bottle stopper? A wine bottle stopper, yeah. Okay. I got a little. Cool. That's cool. And it's so I, made a bunch cool. Of these. <laughs> I can also show I can I could do a screen share here. Let me do a screen share. Oh, I don't have this open right, I don't think. This isn't open, right? I have, I have to stop and go back. My wife also turns. Oh, yeah? So we have to do something with these things. Here we go. <laughs> this was, oh, my goodness. This is an infestation. <laughs> <laughs> Save the cheese. You Come got on, it. Cheese. 
Making oh, years is more trouble than the rest of it. But anyway. Yes. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, I've been making stools, little stools. Cute. That was the latest one. There are, these are, uh, well, she turned a bowl out of uh, a maple burl. Wow. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. And I think I got one. Uh, this is magnolia. I have to say, I came down here from up north, uh, up around Ohio. And uh, in Ohio, number one, we don't have magnolia, but you learn real quick that wood grows faster down here, trees grow faster. Up north, you'd never see a grain that far apart ever. Right. And when you come down here, you see these things, it looks like lines through, you know, somebody painted them on or something. Uh, up, up north, there'd be five times as many lines. These things would be 3 16 apart instead of three quarters of an inch. But anyway, right. this magnolia, it's got a defect in the side that's filled with uh, coffee grinds. I use my coffee grinds to use them and then dry them out. Anyway, that's it for me, I think. That's Very cool. nice, Jeff. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Your wife does a great job. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Have Rita, have Rita do a demonstration some night. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> She is doing it. We co-instruct now in the, but it's worse than that. We we gotta start, we have to sell our stuff or we can't even give it away as fast as we're making it. We had bowls stacked in the bathroom here for a while. Oh my goodness. We got stuff all over the place. But... Mm -mm -mm. Lots of fun. Yes. I remember the my favorite piece you've made, it was a uh napkin holder the uh it was like a lady the skirt was the napkins yeah i love yeah. that piece I, I still got i just made three more of those i got those uh they're being finished right now really oh i would love to make one of those that mm. was awesome wish you were still here in ohio i'd come over and you can show me how to make one. Oh yeah <laughs> Yes, come back to Ohio. <laughs> They're not that hard to make. Uh. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, anybody? <laughs> Take a look at my video stream. You'll see four gnomes that I just made. Hey, who's speaking? Scott. Uh, Scott Hampton. Yep, yep, yep. Keep talking, Scott. Hey, there he is. Look at those. Those were cute. Yeah. This is a New Year's Eve with his horn. <laughs> this guy, he's just hanging out. Here's a Santa Claus. And here's the guy out down walking down the market street with selling reeds. So <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So that's it for me. This week. So, what are you doing next week, sir? Ah, uh, let me switch cameras real quick. There we. Go. I'll get myself on here. There we go. I am making uh, icicle ornaments. Let me see if I got one handy. Uh, here's one. This is a. This one's in kind of progress. Let's find the other one here. This one's bigger than I'm going to be making. This is just a practice piece. That's cool. But I'm going to make three different ones next week. Uh, I'm going to make a snowman similar to this. I'll make a Santa Claus one and one with a Christmas tree on top. So oh. cool. and all the finials will be different. There'll be different designs down in this area. So it'll be, be nice, Scott. All right. Hope you guys can make it. We'll be here <laughs> all right. with bells on. <laughs> right everybody bells on it's open pardon the mess of my shop this is the chaotic time of the year for me oh my I, mean, I have to put like i have to make like three or four hundred ornaments <laughs> and when i do that my shop just goes boom <laughs> <laughs> 
it's like an explosion goes off in here. So don't look bad to me. Mine's got six inches, maybe 12 inches of sawdust on the floor. Well, that's what's below me. You can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else? Uh, Plenty of room on the dance floor, folks. Plenty of room on the dance floor. <laughs> what you got to show us, guys? Tips, tricks, hints, ideas. Problems. Yeah, problems. We'd what, we'll take it off. What's the best chuck for that new lathe? What you got? Come on. How much time <laughs> you have? Let's see. There's how 80 some of us in here. You're going to get 80 different opinions. Exactly. Well, you don't try to fill time, but actually looking for info. <laughs> I've been real happy with my record powers. I'll just say that. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll take a look at those. Do the I chucks you have will they fit your new lathe? Uh the the ones I have right now, because it's a different different thread, I'm going from one inch eight TPI to inch and a quarter. So Either I get yeah. an adapter, which is going to give me possibly a wobble, or I, I need to get a different chuck. So. Yeah, your your current chucks, they're all direct thread. Yeah, Roger, yeah. they're all direct thread. So. Yeah, just whatever I, you can find. Try to keep that wobble out as much as possible. I have, you know. Yeah, it's, it's just all going to depend on what kind of uh, projects you plan on making. And the ver the biggest concern is the variety of jaws each truck provides. Some right. manufacturers don't offer that big of a variety of jaws compared to others. So, so I, I, I guess the, the question I would have would be like, for instance, Record Power and Nova, I understand they can, you can do interchanging on the jaws. Yes. Uh, yeah. I've got, I've got that uh, Nova uh, G3, you know, three pack with the, the larger, the medium and the small pin jaws. Um, so if I, if I was to get a record power or a Nova, then all the jaws are compatible, correct? Yes. Should be, yes. Yeah. I, I found that I don't, I only use two sets of jaws. I use the standard 50 millimeter and the pin jaws and I have two chuck bodies and I just keep them on there. I don't ever take the jaws off. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what I got set up. Cause I got my son's set of jaws and, uh, I, I've got mine, you know, my chuck and his chuck. So that's what I've been doing. But if I had a third chuck, you know, I could warp a size or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got like I've got like eight other sets of jaws that I never use. They're all still in a lot of them are still in the original packing. <laughs> so it's... Well, when I'm making bowls, I want to match the jaw size to the size bowl I'm going to be making. If it's a large bowl, yeah. you want to use large jaws for a tent. Right. You don't want to go with the small you know, average what they call number two jaws. When you got your size lathe, you know, you're going to have like, <laughs> if you got an 18 inch blank on there, you can't use a jaw size like that. You need a bigger, heavier chuck, like a Vic Mark 120 or something that can hold a much larger set of jaws. Right. And, and, well, a, and a heavier, heavier, like a Vic Mark, like I'm suggesting, really cuts dampens down on the vibration too. It really helps with that. Mm -hmm. The okay. SC4 with 100 millimeter jaws isn't a bad option. Jaws, you know? What was that, Billy? I On the large bows, you're going to want four and five inch jaws, maybe. Yeah. Depending the, on how big you go. The mm -hmm. SC4 with 100 millimeter jaws isn't a bad option for bigger bowls. Okay. That's about four inches. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it. I like yeah. the one ways. One way is a great chuck. Yeah, it is, but they're they're limited on the on the jaw size, though. That's the problem with them. Yeah, and Vic marks are great chucks. Yeah, um, I've got Vic marks. I've got the I've got one ways, and I've got Axminster, and they're all good jaw or chucks. And the reason why I did that is so I have a good variety of different jaw sizes I could put on there. That's why I got a whole, you know, I just don't stick with one company and be, and be limited by what they offer. I got a variety of different chucks. So I can. Good move. Yeah. Good move. You know, when we started talking about this and Sandy said about the, the, the thread size and threaded and adapters and stuff, 
you know, right on the money is that small chucks may not work well on a large machine and small chucks may not be able to hold what you can or withstand what you'll do to it on a on a different machine but that gap that little gap is that that adapter if you look at an adapter don't get something cheaper no get something more expensive because everything you have is to be relying on that adapter before anything else happens if it twists if it jams if it's got bad threads on it um and we talked earlier about going to littlemachineshop.com to get parts and pieces uh keep that on your shopping list littlemachineshop.com they're not a sponsor we don't have any sponsors these are recommendations and that's where i'd go when i'm looking for parts for my lathe or, or whatever um and I've seen people demonstrate here and show things and they um they'll show their their lathe and it'll have that little plastic lock handle for the uh for the um the tail stock or um or a lock handle for the the, the tool rest or whatever those can be interchanged with real hard metal pieces that oh, yeah. will still have the ratchet to them and all um It'll break your heart when you're out in the shop and you're in the middle of something and that little bitty chinky, and I use that term nicely, chinky handle will break. And then what do you do? The rest of the day, you have to use a pair of pliers to tighten it, loosen it up. But then you'll think, oh, I'll just call Jet and order another one. Do you really want to do that? No, um, <laughs> they'll send you the same cheap plastic one that they came on the lathe. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because now the jet guy won't talk to me at all. So, <laughs> catalogs. <laughs> Think about that along with them. bearings and other parts. If they failed, why do you want to replace them with a piece that will fail? Mm. And that's all you do. You just buy in a few moments. Um, when you go for bearings, go to your local uh, bearing place. Every every town's got one that sells specialized bearings. They have their code number on the side of the bearing. Psh, you're home free. And don't say, I got these for $3. I got these for $8. I'll save money. I'll get the $3 ones. Come on. <laughs> you go cheap, Eddie, you'll be cheap. Go ahead. Eddie, I'm still using a wrench on my uh, tool rest. Matter what? Of fact, yesterday... <laughs> Yesterday, I uh, replaced the bolt because I've uh, rounded it out. <laughs> I had to buy I a bolt three, yesterday. I have three pairs of channel locks on mine. <laughs> <laughs> what turned it? Y'all amaze me. Brenda, what's the thread size on that handle? I don't know. Well, find out. Let me know, Brenda, because I got a stash. Okay. And I might have the I might have the handle, and I'll send it to you. All right then. You don't want to have to send me a secret jar cover either. That's that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> For those who've joined us late, Brenda Brenda took Doug Miller's uh, project from last week, and the word seer compartment came up. Brenda still have the secret compartment secret compartment available. Look yeah. at this. Yeah, watch this. Check this out. Open it up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Space inside. See, there's the lid. Well, space inside where you can put something in it. When I first made it, I brought it in and took pictures. Like You can put um, a recipe folded up in there, a dollar bill folded in there, some candy. And it fits on the jar and is real pretty. And that's because she followed cool. Doug's demonstration oh, last yes. week and put her head to the metal, and that was it. Came up with something to be unique, and that's why we do this, folks. What can you play with? See, I, I, I just can't wait to see what comes up next week in this birdhouse challenge because really? <laughs> Turner's, Turner's are going to bring it out of, the, out of the corner. I mean, really. They're going to bring some great stuff out. I mean, real. I'm scared to see what Joaquin's going to bring out. I mean, no. <laughs> because we're all playing with this. And tonight, a demonstration, which will be on our website very soon. Thanks to Dave. 
a webmaster. He'll put put that demo up there. When you look at it, and this is I when I was teaching regularly regular lessons, I would tell people, don't look at what I turn. Don't look at where I'm going. Look at how I'm going to get there. Doug showed you how to hold pieces three or four or five different ways. And as he was talking about it, somebody said, you better sand it up because you can't get to it again. Doug held it a different way than I would have held because I would have held it in a way that I could have got it again. And maybe I'll have to show that one day. And it's called a jam chuck. (laughs) You've never seen one of those before, a jam chuck? Every time we turn around, somebody says, you know, you can do a a jam chuck. You can hold that. and you It's it's another piece of, oh, my God, Kim will get me, scrap wood that you use up in your shop. And always had a box full of them. Put a te- I'd, I'd put a tendon on them, the right size to fit my chuck jaws, yeah. and that's critical. You make a tenon, if you're going to hold it for anything that can have any vibration to move to it, you have to size it to fit your chuck jaws, especially if you're using those, those dovetail-type jaws. I only use the profiles. I don't like the serrated jaws uh, or the ones with the grooves on them. I like the profile because you get a good, tight grip. Um it's like putting your whole hand on it to grab it rather than just a little bit of fingertips. Hey, Eddie, speaking of that, that kind of uh, Chuck, wouldn't it be advisable for Tim to get a um, adapter for some of the Chucks that he has, even though they're not going to be big enough to do wow. like a big bowl on his new lathe, but they will be usable for like the little things like that, wouldn't they? He's, he's, yeah, but be careful. You're talking about restraint amongst wood turners. That, that's a restraint thing, you know. <laughs> uh, we, we don't normally go that way. But yes, if you, if you, if you do, uh, Matt Harbor said a little while ago, he's got two chucks set up, one for spigot jaws and one for regular. Both of my, I've got three chucks. Here, about a lathe. One has got uh, um, the big flat plates, and I can't get the name out of my head right now, uh, cold, that you cold can move jaws. the buttons on. Cold, cold jaws. jaws, all right. One's got cold jaws. Uh, I've got another set of cold jaws that's set up with wood face, pl- with wood blocks on it. And then I've got my profile jaws for the, for the number twos and then the number ones. Mm-hmm. I, unlike these folks that think I got to snap my jaws, I'll snap them back on and all that. No, one I time, like unscrew the yes. chuck, put it back in. Exactly. That snap That's on, snap off that stuff. He keep the gels or the chucks that he's got. Yeah, but and, and keep and market, market finial, market knobs yeah. or whatever. So yeah. you understand. I, I'm not, paint uh, it red so you have it re- following. I'm not, I'm not getting rid of those chucks. I plan on using them on both lathes because the other lathe is still going to be in my shop. So, okay. You know, so, no, Whoa. I'm not I'm getting rid of the other lathe. Okay. Um, no, but I was, I was looking in. at getting something big enough just to go on the big the new one. Gotcha. And so I'll, I'll tell you, when I upgraded to my big Powermatic, I went from a, a smaller lathe and I did buy the adapter initially just so I could keep turning and use the new lathe until I saved up enough pennies to then go buy me a bigger chuck. So it was just that it was a cheaper, quicker way to just be able to keep going. Yeah, I, I, I did the same thing, Doug. And that that's part of the plan. But uh, I'm, I am looking at trying to find a, a chuck for that lathe at the same time. Gotcha. It's, a, it's a one-time business purchase. Is that an inch and a quarter eight plate? Uh correct. Inch and a quarter by eight. Okay. Well, in I, case y'all know, find I, one I, laying around that want to send it to Tim, I want you to get the right size. I, I would encourage you to stay. I mean, there's certainly advantages to using different chucks, but I would encourage you to stay in the same family because you know that all your Nova jaws will fit all your Nova chucks because that's how they make them. And no, I mean, I have two supernova bodies. Maybe they're supernova twos. I don't know. But, 
you know, they're robust. I can handle anything on my Powermatic 3520B with that. You know what I mean? And I've turned some really big, heavy things with those with those chucks, those jaws. You know, uh, it just happens that I've got pin jaws on one of them now. So, uh, you know, I having that interchangeability is hugely useful. And I'm a big fan of buying an extra chuck body just so I don't have to change jaws, just so I don't have to hunt through the mess underneath my lathe for screws that I've dropped. Exactly. You know, and, and, you know, and I use magnets and all the other good things. So, to you know, I work to not drop screws, but it happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Hey, I, I appreciate the info, everybody. Thank you much. Yep. That's what we're here for, Tim. That's right. That's how we got started. Wood turners helping wood turners. A uh, couple of notes here. Um, number one, next week we're going to have our birdhouse challenge. We want you to bring your birdhouses and show them in the gallery next week, which Scott Hampton will be doing our demonstration ISIC ornaments. And we have a lot more things involved next week. But don't forget a couple of projects we have. These are continuous projects, uh, or continuing projects. Uh, wig stands, for those who have a need for them. Remember, you're helping cancer patients live through what's probably the hardest part of their entire life. So if you can get into this, uh, create a wig stand, give them to your local oncology group. Th there are sources. To, th always you can find somebody that will take them and need them and use them. And the other is Doug Bro said a little while ago, Professor Bro, pardon me, said a little while ago that about collecting pens. We still have an ongoing, and I don't think it will ever stop, Freedom Pen Project. We have about six members that actively pursue us getting pens to them so they can pass them on to the people that preserve our freedom. No politics here, folks. I'm a veteran. I believe in veterans, but I believe what they go through, they should be rewarded for. We don't pay them enough to do what they do, and we often don't thank them enough. So let's get them some freedom pens and thank them with something from our heart. So if you would make one, send it on. All the addresses are on our website. Nothing special. A pen. And if you don't think, well, my pens aren't good enough, your pens are great. If you make them, they're great. And I'm never going to question your work. All right. With that, we're going to call in the evening, folks. I hope to see you all back again here next week. And I, I, I'm honest, you make my week. Thank you so much. God, I'm glad that bathroom mark thing didn't go too far with Doug Rowe. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's early. It's early. It could have happened. Good night, everybody. Be safe. Good night. 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 Good I just did. Night, everybody. <laughs> All right. Good night. Night, everybody. Countdown. Five, four, three, two. Bye-bye.